We cast 13 post-Imperial team games yesterday. I expect six more at least today. <laughs> I expect it to be a long one. Oh, shoot. I need capture age up, don't I? Yep. I'm into the game already, so I can lay name off the saves like you were doing for me yesterday. We've got sure. Tato playing as the Koreans, Jordan as the Malians, Doubt as the Persians, Nikov playing the Malians, Leary as the Portuguese, and MBL as the Persians. So Tato as Koreans, and Leary has Portuguese, and then the other two saves are mirrored for both teams. Yeah, um, Koreans one that might have separated the two teams in the second semifinal yesterday. Remember, we, we talked a lot about MBL. And his performance with Koreans, winning with Koreans against a, a better Civ in Chinese. Later on, we talked then Chinese was needed. And I think we could have that same conversation with maybe a Civ like uh, Portuguese, Malians, whatever. So it's not the biggest deal, but just things to think about. Because when mm -hmm. we're four or five games in, there's certain Civs you're going to want. But very well spaced these players are, I'd say, Dave, with the exception yeah. of the North. I would say I'd give GL the advantage here simply because... Tato is all on his own. True. Yep. Doubt it has tons of area to expand, and Jordan can simply walk across the marshland over to where Tato's base is. So GL is going to have potential for a massive boom if they want to, and that is always a concern on Nomad if you've got your whole team cluttered going for pressure and there's one boomer on the side, which there yeah. likely will be from GL. Yeah, I think... Uh... It'll, it'll also come down to how it's played. Like, I guess having Koreans far away from everyone is going to allow them to comfortably go for war wagons and yeah. boom. But also, sometimes you might want the Korean player close to other people for the castle drop and for the guard towers. So it does depend an awful lot on, on how things play out here. But I'm loving the fact we have a landlock here, Dave. You don't see it all the time. And here in the Return of the Clans Nomad, we've got a landlock on the left side, which... Honestly, leaves very little water. If you look around, there's a lot of land close to the edge of the map. So we've got like four docks all in the same spot. We've got MBL's dock, mm -hmm. then Jordan's dock, Doubt's followed by Nikov's dock, dock, and then yep. Doubt's dock. Yeah, so it's like every other right there. So I don't and see the, the only being The easy. only person that has basically a dock alone, even Tato's dock, is really close to that. Mm -hmm. The only person that has a dock alone is Leary. With a solitary dock in the south. True. Which, he'll have a lot of free fish there. I don't think Tato's going to discover that with that cow. He might be going along the shoreline to look mm -hmm. for it. But it's going to be, if they don't find that, it's going to be really difficult. Because Leary should have free fish for a very long time. Also, Tato just added, okay, he has a dock. I was a little worried he wouldn't have one. He just built it next to the walls. Um, yeah, Dave. And, and I think... If you want any player on your team to have a safe fish boom, it would be the player that's most likely going to go for a castle drop. Yep. And we saw it yesterday with Gamer Legion and WWP, where both teams had Portuguese there, but we saw castle drop into Orkin Guns. And this brings me back to my point. If Leary and MBL are able to discuss and realize that Jordan is close, then and they see him, they know he's there, Leary could go fast castle with the safe fish boom and drop a castle right on Jordan. And I think... I'm just going to make a guess that at like 20 minute game time, Jordan's score is going to be really bad because his fish is surrounded and also he is surrounded by aftermath players. What is MBL doing with this villager? MBL, you're getting awfully close to that boar. He's trying to lame it, maybe trying to block it. He did steal a cow. Yeah, the end. Almost lost the vill there. MBL, if he didn't have loom, he would have lost it for sure. Oh, Jordan just shot the boar with his TC. Jordan just shot the boar with his TC, and that was due to, I mean, MBL won't know this, but that was due to the fact that MBL ran in there and kind of affected the whole TC weakening boar trick. No, it worked. It, it worked. worked. Yeah. MBL won't know that. No, he won't. <laughs> but it, it worked, and he's got a boar right next to him, too, so MBL's not struggling for food at the moment. And uh, let's look at the villager numbers here. We got Nikov, 13, Jordan, 13, Tato, 13. Both the Persian players, though, MBL and Doubt, looking pretty strong. Doubt yeah. actually with a fantastic start. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I think they want Doubt to go water here because he's Persian, so he has the higher HP docks. He's also maybe sending fishing ships out to scout or maybe just looking for more fish right now. But they do not have any scouting. Maybe they've conversed about it, but I don't think Doubt sees at least that there's docks next to him. That would be That's really be important. That's going to be up first, so. too. Yeah, that's going to be up first. Yeah, he's going and to gold, pressuring. too. 
Yeah, so he's definitely going double dock water. He shouldn't go loom here, I think. I think he should get up quickly. We've got Nikov going loom, so Nikov will likely click up soon. What does Doubt see? <clears throat> he doesn't see any of the other docks. Okay, so maybe he won't really go up as quickly as he maybe could mm -hmm. because he hasn't seen the fishing ships from Nikov. And we'll see. He does get loom now, and you're right. He's not as fast as Nikov. Nikov is Malians. Now, Malians have the cheaper... Well, the cheaper everything that costs wood, so it's very easy for them to be competitive on water with multiple docks. And having Portuguese on the team for Aftermath is a pretty big deal here. They have been able to share vision with free cartography, and so they've known, Dave. They've known about Doubt's dock. There's the next dock for Nikov right next to this. I think, again, this is going to be problematic for one of these teams because there's so many fishing ships in this spot. Uh, I think MBL forgot the second building. Yeah, he's going for a mill right now. Yeah, I think he and did as well. he had like 700 food in the bank. So MBL still has a villager queued up. Is MBL just playing like FC or something? He's got his dock right next to Jordan's. Mm -hmm. He knows where Jordan is. He knows where the dock from Jordan is. Maybe by this point, he's like, well, I can't compete on water. I'm too late. Yeah. I'm just going to try and add more fish, which he's doing right now, and get up to Castle Age as soon as I can. I really like this for Aftermath, though, because they have three players, three different roles. Nikov is going to be going full water, and he's very fast to it. And you know there's going to be reward because it's all close by. Good little Vil War here for MBL he's and trying to wall Jordan. <laughs> uh, then you have Leary going fast castle, most likely. I, I could be wrong on that, actually, because he's got two docks down towards the south, where you have a back dock for Tato. And then you have MBL, and if he were to go fast castle knights, I would really like their position. But we're assuming a bit... As the villagers are have walled in MBL's villager, and MBL is trapped there for the time being. Yep, MBL will probably die there too. It looks like Tato actually explored the south, but I don't think he saw Leary's docks. Nope. He made it. He made a dock down there to be safe. Yep. But Leary has docks on either side of him, and he's going for fire galleys right away. So Leary's going to help his team. Okay. A little bit and clear this stuff out from Tato. I wonder if he sees that. He did see the dock from Tato, so he knows, but Tato does, has no idea. It's not really on. the position where you would want someone going double dock, but it will clear out the one fishing ship from Tato, he, and then it will protect himself. I think himself. He, was concerned, he was concerned that Tato saw his docks, and that's why the dock is down there. Yeah, maybe. MBL is going fast castle, by the way. It uh, hurts that he's going to lose his fish, but he could still try and relocate there. this. He's losing that villager. He could have just made a wall in between him and the fire galley to tank the damage, but he lost the vill. He's going blacksmith market, and this choke point along the edge of the map is going to be really difficult to micro. I personally hate this. I don't think I hate anything else in Age of Empires more than uh, having to run fire ships through a choke point in a fire war because you're just waiting for a demo to hit you. Yeah. And Doubt's this actually switching galleys. into galleys. Yeah, okay. Yeah, this is when galleys start to feel good in a choke point like that. Leary protecting okay, so here his comes, fish. Here comes Jordan from the other side. Uh, he's going to see the numbers from Nikov and say, uh, maybe not. I'm going to back up. And Nikov is busy killing that wall, so his villager can escape now. MBL is on the way to the castle age already. So the FC play paid off to some extent. Mm -hmm. And he's still got six fishing ships alive if his team ever t retakes water. Maybe he can even dock in this little bay and he'd be safe. Uh, Gamer Legion have two people going water right now. I guess it's the same for AM, but it feels like it's... 1v2 right now with Nikov being surrounded by Doubt and Jordan. And nothing's really resulted from it yet, which is giving MBL so much time with this fast castle to prep something. I'm thinking maybe some siege that would go right to Jordan's TC, but good fight here from Jordan so far. Demo pops out from MBL. Good help there from MBL. And it wasn't the best demo, but I like the idea. There's a demo raft coming out from Jordan. Uh-oh, uh-oh, Nikov, uh-oh. Jordan keeps and it, it in goes... the dock. Oh, there you go. Oh, he, he blew up too. That's fine. Nikov still has his fish alive, but they can't do anything. There's no fish there. It's all been fished out. This yeah. is so busy up on this side. The galley's now coming in from D Doubt. Nikov will start try to run his fish that way. He can't go that way. He tries to run him back the other way. He can't go that way. Doubt's galleys Nikov are gonna so be telling weak. His... Yeah. He's going to be telling his team, like, I'm off water now. Yeah. We gotta and focus and now it's Leary's job. So Leary killed one fishing ship from Tato. This should be Leary's responsibility to find the rest. Right? right? Like, he's got a full fish boom, and I'm sure he's happy with that.
But he really needs to find the rest of ta the rest of Tattoo's fish. Is look at MBL, Dave. He's gonna save his fish for now, loop them to the left of his gate, and build a sneaky dock there. I actually really like this tower from Jordan that he's put up in between him and MBL. He knew MBL was going FC. He's gonna add a wall. He's gone under stone and he's gone for a tower right away, which is just gonna buy him more time. Mm -hmm. I like that. It like in the middle of a field, just basically on a berries. It doesn't look great. But when you consider that MBL is in Castle Age so much quicker, I think it's a really smart decision. I think it's something you have to do. I think it'll be three or four shotted by this Manganel, though. And this is this is what we mentioned based on Jordan's position. He's got full water. He's got no space on land. It's important to note that he can't really run easily because MBL's got Palisades there. But I guess they're only Palisades. And Doubt is with a lot of open space. Nikov also with a lot of open space. They are kind of close to each other here, Dave. And there goes Dow on the way to Castle H faster than Nikov. I like it. Tato immediately going for two TCs. So he's going to boom in relative safety over here. Mm -hmm. He's on stone as well. Uh, he's got 400 stone in the bank. So maybe think about wagons pretty soon. The tower is going down pretty quickly, but Jordan can make another one because he went on stone so early. And he's buying himself enough time to make that other one, get the market down, and try and get up to Castle H himself. Now, if Jordan can get all this water pressure down around the back to Leary's base, that'd be good. But Leary is on the way up. He does see this. He does have plenty of Navy out to group into the choke. My next question is, because I think Jordan's going to die, but do you want to castle drop Jordan if you are Leary? I think the answer should be no. I think you want to place a castle against someone else, but he's also so far from everyone else. So this is I, a difficult I decision. You, I think you do, because MBL has that gate. Yeah, try and kill and him. And Jordan, Jordan can't really run. You can take him out of the game here. Nikov's <laughs> got a full wall off on the other side. Yeah, I see that. And you don't, you know that Tato is on the other side, but that's such a long way to run. I think the most effective castle you can do is on Jordan. And Jordan is in a world of hurt right now. He's going to start thinking about transporting. And AM has to start thinking about what Jordan's going to do in this situation. And it's clearly going to be a transport. So maybe get something in between there. He's already transported five villagers now. I like the I like the booming approach from Leary. He's getting gill nets instantly. Still thinking about all that safe fish in the south. Upgrading his ships as well. Jordan did already send over a batch of villagers in a transport. He's working on batch number two. But yeah. I mean his TC is about to go down. He needs to get out of here and save as much as possible. Such a great wall off there from MBL to make the gate and the palisade walls there. Yep, I like it means that Jordan has to go five at a time across, and Leary should know about this. Like, MBL should be saying, listen, I'm killing his TC. Mm -hmm. He's got to run somewhere. Yep. Check for the transports. Leary's got the fire ships over there, and Leary is now going over to Nikov stocks, so Leary's not going to be able to spot this. Yeah, it feels like at the moment, Nikov is speaking a lot to Leary. You can see Nikov signals. He's like, hey, Doubt's got water here. They don't want Doubt to have a free fish boom on the other side. And that is exactly what Doubt has. By the way, uh, Doubt's dock blocking Nikov's wall next to the stone. Do you see that? That is a true <laughs> dock block right there. <laughs> dock blocker. He's a dock blocker, folks. And MBL places a TC where Jordan's first TC was. Leary still hasn't found that transport ship. Leary still hasn't found Jordan's fish either. Mm -hmm. He's looping around to try and find Doubt's fish. But Doubt's fish are all the way on the side. And Leary even going for... A dock on that side since he's seen all that stuff. So he'll know exactly where to target. Yeah, I, I guess what bothers me right now for AM... I mean, they they basically taken Jordan out of the game, which is huge, right? I think they're going to end up having a, a, a solid lead because of it. But what bothers me is Tato was fishing freely this whole time. Like, MBL even sees it right now. Look at Jordan. Yeah. Jordan of all people... Oh, sorry, that's MBL. Never mind. MBL of all people sees this. But I think I'm with you, Dave. Leary should have sent a fire or two here. Nice micro there from Tato. That has allowed Tato to get to 61 villagers because he's had all that food income. We know Doubt has had his fish. He's defending his fish in the north, but Tato had nothing to protect his water. Tato's got a turtle ship coming out too. I like so it. That could be that could be pretty annoying. Nikov still only on one TC here. He's going for a monastery siege workshop approach. Mm. Doubt went for knights, but didn't really invest into it because he couldn't do too much damage. And Doubt is sitting on three TCs. So we look at the villager numbers right now. AM still behind by 20 economic units. So it's vills and fishing ships together. 
Might change though, if mm -hmm. Leary manages to kill the fish from doubt. The rules in this tourney are very, very strict when it comes to sending resources. You cannot send any resources to help Jordan right now. It's not allowed. The Jordan just been trying to get the food to go up, but Dave, even he has had fish. Look at Leary looping right by Jordan's fish. Yep. A couple patrols inland there, or I guess through that, that little canal, and this would have worked out so well for Leary. I mean, it has worked out well. Don't get me wrong. It's still good. But as Tato goes for a turtle ship in the south, uh, that might may or may not work out. I just think that Leary could have done a better job there. Yeah, Leary has to pay attention to multiple places, though. And here comes Nikov now pressuring Doubt. But Doubt is Persian, so that TC is going to be alive well into the next year. Mm -hmm. Even with two Mangonels attacking it. And we've got War Wagons now heading over. War Wagons not the greatest against Monks though so maybe Nikov can defend this and distract still Tato had the three TC's up really early 65 villagers he's got two castles now he's looking to be in a really good spot I was very critical of doubt yesterday on the Nomad game in their semi-final and I think deservedly so he had like 120 villagers which was 40 more than everyone else and he struggled to put that into anything on land and this is becoming a similar problem but I think the difference here is there is a lot of support from Tato and Doubt, it was a little greedy, but he gets a big shot there, and Davey's seeding tons of farms now. So he's really starting to mix in farming eco instead of just the fish. But looking Look better for Doubt today. Tato. Look at that castle from Tato. He's got all the confidence in the world. Eight war wagons. How many monks on the field for Nikov? Only three, and if he loses them quickly here, it could be a problem. But Tato could also have some problems if he gets the war wagons converted and he deletes the castle foundation. He's going to fall back a little bit with that. Maybe wait for some more wagons to come out. But Nikov has managed to defend on this side. And AM have complete control mm -hmm. over the other side of the map. They just need to clear up Doubt's fish and all those docks up there. If you really want that initial castle spot, I would love to have see a guard tower first. But he's going to go for a castle further back. And look at Leary. Leary, fast imping. We've seen this a lot from him in this tourney. I think they recognize the importance of Trebs here as Leary makes castle number two on the front. And Dave, this is just so good for them because now Doubt's making a castle there as well. They're thinking protect from an all-in castle age. Yep. And Leary is going to flip the script on them and go for Trebs. This is not something that Gamer Legion can deal with right now. Does Leary, how many Fatorias does Leary make? Yo made five yesterday, which was mm -hmm. ridiculous. Jordan only made three and he fell behind. I think, I think you make like two because he actually has eco too. Yeah. He's got a lot of vills, so I don't think you make too many because it takes up a lot of pop space and you have decent pop. He's also done really well with the fishing ships. Leary had a lot of fish and he mm -hmm. managed to save all of them this game. So that's been helping him out a lot. He's looping his fires now around to the north to try and deal with the remnants of Doubt's uh, fishing economy, which is still helping him, by the way. Yeah, Doubt's Doubt still fish has too. 17 fish. Like, that's nuts. This is always a frustrating feeling because you're going to see the castles on either side pretty soon if you're Gamer Legion. And then you're going to think, oh crap, that means he's going to be up to imp. Yeah. And if they would have sensed it, I think they would have idled TCs and stopped producing. Uh, mainly Tato here. But that's a little too late. As this is going to be a big lead. I'd love to see chemistry rushed in from Leary so he could go for bomber cannons too. What's MBL been up to? I guess booming right now. 96 booming, villagers yeah. for his team. Yeah. And we'll see what he brings to the table. Most likely it's going to be knights. That's what you tend to see from Persians. I think paladins would be the key, right? Yeah. You just got to get up to the, the thing is like you can't be adding eco and military at the same time. Especially if you lost your fish early. You got to wait, right? You got to do nothing yeah. for a few minutes. And then you'll have the economy to start adding paladins. So I think that's what MBL is doing. That's what Doubt tried to do yesterday. I think he needed like another minute to really mm -hmm. get involved in the game. But MBL is going to try and time that perfectly. Oh, you know. Probably going to Knights. Tato does have... I mean, this is not just Tato. Doubt, Tato, and Jordan do have a lot more access to resources. There's a lot yeah. more open space over there. And so if... If Leary's got to spend all this time taking out some guard towers, then maybe the castles are still going to stand. And as I look at the economies now, I mean, Doubt's at 114. He's on the way up. Tato's at 95. He's on the way up. And then you've got Jordan. Even getting... Yeah, well, Jordan's at 46, yeah, which he's... is actually pretty good com considering his start. Yeah, and he doesn't have to do anything now, right? He, he will eventually come back in the game. So 
I'm looking now to MBL because Nikov's struggling a bit, and I'm like, okay, MBL, what are you going to bring to the table next? And he's also imping now. Tato got Yupsiung for his towers. Oh, thank so God Tato you said it. Is... <laughs> Tato, I don't know if that's how you say it, but Tato's <laughs> I, ready I for the camp fest, dude. Yeah, I refuse to say it. But I like how Tato has accepted that he's going to lose this castle. He will be an imp shortly, and then when he's an imp with upgrades, I think... This is tough. I think Dao could lose his castle easily as well, but at least the rest of Dao's base should be protected by army. MBL is up to 114 villagers now. So mm -hmm. he's surpassed Dao, and he has 11 fishing ships. He's on the way to Imperial Age. He's getting the, the cavalry armor, getting the attack. And uh, where is he going to pressure? He's making stables over near Nikov space. Maybe there's potential for him to go in through the other side. I think it's really weak there. If he gets a transport ship across and makes stables over there, it could mm, be yeah. trouble for GL. I Big agree. Trouble. Transport would be huge. Transport uh, transport a few vills, Dave, like you said. Yeah. Get across. Now, now wagons should be much stronger. And Leary just lost so many of his organ guns to Manganels. So... Yep. Not exactly what you'd want there if you're Leary. Remember, he's gone fast imp, low eco. I'm looking at his base now. He does have one and a second Fatoria going up, but I think we all know at this stage. We might not have known when Portuguese came out years ago, but the Fatoria is definitely a lot slower than having villagers. And when there's resources everywhere, I have a lot of faith in GL that they could push this back. Leary's got one villager behind enemy lines, and Tato's trying to deal with it right now. Where is it exactly? It's in the very middle of the map. No man's land in between Tato and Doubt's base. And Leary walls it in, but there's a wagon. <laughs> okay. okay. Yeah, you never know, right? It's not like uh, you're going to see a sneak castle organ guns with Portuguese, but if MBL could do that, it's a completely different story. If he can get stables yep. up, is MBL deciding right now, Dave, to go for heavy camel instead of going for He's paladin? Getting... MBL's making a transport ship. He's getting careening. So he might actually send over just paladins mm. into the economy, which would still wreak havoc on Jordan's eco. It would. It'd do a lot on Tato's eco as well. This side is, like, pretty well defended for your team. As MBL now goes for camels over there. He hasn't even... Huh, he's going camels. He's not even teching into Cavalier. I guess he looked at it and he said, well, Doubt already has Cavalier. Yeah. So if I try and go the Paladin route, I'll just be behind. So he's going for the counter and... We'll see how it plays out. I think the walls from Nikov has done so much to allow these Trebs to take out the castle, but it looks as though Tato thinks he can engage against the Trebs. The heavy camels come in. I think this is way too early to fight if you're MBL. I could be wrong, Dave, but he doesn't he have might armor just, yet. Yeah, I think he was thinking about pushing this back and saving the Trebs there. Maybe, yeah. The castle will go down because there's only five villagers repairing it, and MBL sacrifices a few units to push that area back. Save all the units there from his ally. And the castle does go down. Nikov getting supplies. Getting block printing as well. So he's going to go champ girl monk. Not sure if I like champions right now. I actually think maybe if Nikov could be the one going heavy camel. As it's much stronger for Malians. And then the Persian player still went paladin. I prefer it. But this is a lot of monks. And I do like the monks. Especially with the upgrades, Dave. He could start to chip away at these wagons a bit. This is where all the action's happening. I'm with you. I think MBL needs to get a sneak villain on the other side. That would do so much right now. He's getting a light cap. So probably thinking about it. Oh, Jordan God. now going for a castle over there. Jordan docking. I think MBL might be a little bit too late when he finally gets over there. Is there any gold left for him? That's my question right now. I think that's an issue for AM too. It's like yeah. they're so cramped. Nikov especially, I think. I guess he's Malian, so his gold lasts a little longer, but... If this position holds for the next 20 minutes, you've got to think it's better for Gamer Legion because of all that wide open space. Yeah, and MBL is selling resources now. So he's strapped for gold for sure. He's got he's got villagers on the other side now, Tristan. There you go. He's going for stables, but Tato immediately going for towers. And, you know, paladins could impact. They could run into the towers and whatnot. But I think Hussar going to struggle in this situation. Yeah. I don't really... I. I I don't like the decision to go camels right away. I, I don't like it. I think I think this also stems back to Doubt being a little better with the imp time and the race to Cavalier, because that's probably what played into MBL's thinking. These wagons, Honestly, man, though, are so I mean, strong. Doubt only boomed. 
he went for water. Yeah, true. And he, boom. Yeah. MBL had to go land pressure yeah. to kill Jordan too earlier. So I don't think it's like a direct comparison. And now Tato and Jordan just simply wall this off. His timing was probably three or four minutes too late. And he just doesn't have the right unit choices. I think the gates for Jordan might not. I mean, if the Hussars go out, the gates might act not actually complete. But look at MBL. Like, he can't get in close to these camels. And now you have Dow going in with the Paladins on the Organ Guns. And he has Halbin here. This is a perfect composition for Gamer Legion. All they're waiting for, David, after one big fight, is to roll forward with Dow's Trebs and Tato's Bomber yep. Cannons and push these castles. And eventually, Jordan's going to be back in the action. Jordan's got a 118 villagers. Man, Tato has done such a good job this game. Holy. You cannot push the Koreans in this situation. 44 wagons here. He's also responded to that landing right away with the towers. Mm -hmm. Like, he had the turtle ships out killing fish. Tato doing fantastic. MBL, though, managed to get a villager walled in at the bottom. Tato doesn't realize yet. There's a stable that is not walled in. Coming okay. up from MBL, maybe he can do something with that. Yeah, I think I think this is what's going to happen. MBL's like, I'm raiding them, I'm raiding them, I'm raiding them. And Nikov's like, we're dying. <laughs> because they need their pop here now. Like, the raid was a good idea when it was 50-50 here. It is not 50-50 here. Leary's organ guns are not going to work. And a bigger question than even Heavy Camel is, why Champ Scarl? <laughs> like, I guess maybe you could say, what do you do with Malians then? But... He doesn't even have champion yet, I guess. Two-handed swordsman look like a poor unit choice against Paladin and the wagons. And this is not looking good for AM. I, I don't see how they break this position in the middle. And now there's a castle going down there from Tato. He sees the villager making the stables. He's going to place the castle in defense. Emil's going to raid a little bit with some Hussar. Yeah, he can't actually get the castle foundation down, actually. MBL blocked it with the stable, so it certainly isn't fun, but MBL, uh, Doubt's here with some paladins, so he'll help out. Now Doubt is there with Halberdiers on the other side, too, and Tato, just every time he gains a foothold, adds a tower behind. It's yeah, perfect. It's, it's perfect. Peak Korean gameplay right here. It's on full display, and Doubt is helping out. Doubt's got paladins near the initial stables from MBL. Just a little bit too slow on the timing. I think MBL should have focused on that right-hand side instead of putting anything over here on the left. If he focuses on the right early, Tato can't be here with this many wagons. What a great job from Doubt and Tato. Like, Jordan uh, was dead, dude. Jordan was dead. And now Jordan can, can actually contribute. But this push, this snowball, this unit composition is just insane. And they also get to save Malians, remember. They... Oh no, Jordan's Malian. Never mind, forget what I just said. They get to say Portuguese, which is not Dude, that's that important. 50 elite war wagons. Champ Skrulls will not even touch these things. Especially because they're not champions yet. Oh no, they will well, be now. Yeah. They will be now. This is as good a fight as you're going to get here if you're Aftermath. Because you've got three players against one. Doubt is, is struggling to contribute for the moment. But like you said, Dave, just add the towers every time you gain a position, and it makes it so difficult for the opponents to ever push it back. Tato even going for more aggressive towers. They push back for now, but that's simply because Tato chose to fall back. <laughs> His mm -hmm. doubt yeah. sends more units. MBL still being a little bit annoying with the Hussar on the other side. Jordan has taken control of water. Jordan can uh, push up to the top side and take more map control there, too. And he's going into champ scarls of his own. And yeah. these ones will actually be effective. Yeah, I think... I mean, it's certainly going to be better because there's camels in there. And camels, they, their only real contribution is if they can attack any cavalry. But the problem is, it's just they died the wagons. So, like, I'm liking Nikov's castle here because it's going to allow them to hold this position a little bit longer. I'm also loving Leary's micro with his bomber cannons. But it still feels inevitable that this position is going to be lost as... Tato's venturing a little too far forward with his cannons here. He's stuck. He's stuck. He killed two, though, and somehow is going to get away. What in the world? It's a good thing they have tiny little legs. Yeah, and you can't even see them behind yeah. all these units. And they get away. They get away. Leary's still selling res for gold. How many Victorias does he have? He's got four now. That's a lot, actually. So he's got four Victorias when he has 69 villagers. He does not have any more pop space for military then, right? Like he's maxed out with how much he can contribute. MBL's still raiding a little bit with these two Hussar. 
Yeah, and it's if they don't notice, it could be a problem. Quite a few kills. Yeah, but... Nikov... Like... Nikov isn't able to really do anything with his army here. He can engage against some halberdiers, mm -hmm. maybe, but the wagons with 9 plus 4 attack are just going to chew right through that pierce armor. And the towers continue to go up behind. MBL trying a transport on the right, Dave. It could go down to these fast fires. He's got a mangonel in there and the villagers. And I think this Run! will go down. Oh, they're There's blocking the each other. Too? Is the castle? No fletching yet. Oh, no, he's got fletching in. Yep, ripped MBL's pop. I think Jordan should switch to the other side now. Honestly, if Jordan were to go for like 20, 30 champions with a few rams and just delete his own walls and run right into yep. MBL's eco there, they then have pressure on the other side they can't deal it's with. It's over anyway. Yeah, true. True, true. MBL goes for another transport. I mean, he's got to queued up. They are correct in trying it because th this is certainly not working. <laughs> so they know this isn't working. Down on the left side right now, uh, left side of the main fight, he's trying to deal with Nikov as Nikov's trebbing down his castle. But yeah, the GG's called. And Gamer Legion, they take Nomad. Mm -hmm. I don't want to say pretty easily because Jordan was, was near dead, but they really made it look like it was easy when you had only two players against three for a while there. Uh, well played to Jordan. To, to know what to do in that situation, save as much pop as possible, but well played to Tata with the big boom, and then dealt with the faster route to Paladin. I just, like, I think there was definitely an opportunity there for Aftermath. I think Nikov was late to Imperial Age, to be honest, and going into Chance Girl doesn't really help this composition that much. Yeah. But they could have held. Leary and Nikov could have held together, Especially if Tato is super distracted by an MBL landing. I think there was a timing window there for MBL to go into Cavalier and land stables while Jordan was still weak, not even Imperial Age yet. And you can rip the entire economy from Jordan and force Tato to be on full defensive mode on the right side while your enemy's 2v1 doubt. This isn't a blame game, but I really think Leary screwed over his team's chances of winning by allowing Tato to have a fish boom. Tato contributed very little on water. And remember, he had that one fishing ship in the south. Leary cleared that and then took forever to ever find Tato's fishing ships elsewhere. And so, you know, maybe he assumed it was on the far side and that he couldn't get there. But the thing is, when you go full boom on Nomad, the dream scenario is when you have six to eight fishing ships bringing in food so you can go three TCs right away and then invest into farms. And if you lose those fishing ships, you have to invest into farms before you add the second and third TC. So a lot of the reason Doubt had his boom was because he fought for water and held it. But Tato had a boom because the water just wasn't found. So yep. we saw a lot of instances where even Jordan, when he was like dead, was still fishing a little bit and Leary didn't find it. So I think Leary and Nikov maybe a little too fixated on killing Doubt's water and it allowed the other things to but happen on the even, other side. The thing is they didn't even kill his fish until Imperial Age. Yeah. You're right. Doubt still has fishing ships alive. He had 17 fish for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And he was all alone over here as the Persians, just fighting water. 4TC boom with 17 fish. Like, super easy to get your eco rolling. I think, though, for GL, the key player here was Tato. He played Koreans perfectly. He did. Honestly. Yeah. Like, he had his own area over here. He contested water a little bit early, but setting down all these towers, the castle forward prevented them from pushing. Then, of course, the war wagons, with no distractions at home, were free to come this way. MBL going camels, I do think had a lot to do with the fact he was behind doubt, right? If he tries to go paladin, he would have been behind, so he tried the camels, didn't work out. Final thing we should probably touch on, just to solidify our point about Tato that game in Koreans, 379 kills for him and 153 deaths. Yep. <laughs> and then uh, Nikov, he had a .38 KD. MBL had a .70 KD, so it wasn't pretty for them, and Aftermath will have to prepare for their home maps now. Alrighty. All right, here we go. So Hart gets subbed in, it looks like. Uh, not a big surprise, because Hart is so uh, accustomed to this type of a map. And we have game number two in the finals here, as I, I'm sure you're changing the team names as well, Dave. Yep. And walling and forward positions, always important. You can see on the left side, you've got Jordan versus Leary. And we're not going to see any Vil Warring there, apparently. Then on the right side, wow, this is super open. So we're going to have Tato versus MBL on the right side. 
And good luck walling that. And and whoever walls the most forward on the very right is going to get all those boars. Pato does, or sorry, MBL does have a pond on mm, that side. Yeah. So that may help him out. It's tough when it's super open like this to try and like invest wood into that. You will get the food payoff eventually, but I wouldn't actually wouldn't be surprised to see a massive fight over these boars in the middle as we see six of them mm -hmm. in between the two players. And then maybe even Tato going for a little rat gameplay here and making a forward dock. I've seen that quite a few times on the BF team games. A forward uh, like water pressure mm -hmm. onto the enemy's dock if you know they're going fish. Middle is really important here because we've got Jordan and Doubt there with their scouts. And then you've got one scout from heart, which is weak, and then two villagers. And he wants to get the forward wall down. And the, the bear might actually come into play here. If they can run back a little bit further, mm -hmm. the bear might aggro these vills. And then they could consider killing a villager here. Let's see. I think see. heart can wall this right here. I think heart can get this wall down. Why is that bear not attacking? There it is. He is now. <gasps> bear. <gasps> okay. There we go. They heart got gets it. it down. So here's the and... deal, Dave. Uh, assuming that Hart actually walls behind this and this doesn't go down. Hart. Hart. Okay. What? Oh, he's attacking what? them now. What? But now oh, the, the scout there. From, the scout is coming from Leary. Nice. That's why he feels okay. super confident. The scout is here from Leary now. It's going to be two villagers and two scouts versus two scouts from GL. Hart is going to go forward. Maybe Hart is even going to try and wall a little bit further forward than this. You got to be careful get... getting too fancy yeah. here. It's tough. There's another bear waiting. If they could annoying. get a wall off near the pond, though, they could then access the pond from Doubt, and Doubt is now docking. Oh, wow, Doubt. That was awful maneuvering with your scout there. He lost it for free. All right. Well, So he can't push deer. He can't help out in these fights. And they might be able... And Doubt is going for a dock here now, too. Oh, boy. Yep, Doubt, Doubt was placing the palisade next to the dock when he lost his scout there, so... Struggling with the Dark Age multitasking. And Doubt's going to try wall this off. But this is not the start you would have wanted at all if you're, if you're Doubt but Gamer Legion. And okay, Doubt sees the Palisade. But man, the paranoia is just going to be setting in now. Because you never know if someone's going to transport later. Or if you're going to lose your fish. Art also has a dock at the back of his base. That's a cute little pond back there. It's got three fish inside. And uh, he's going to go for fish on that. And BL has docked. Yeah. You know, he's rushing with a dock. This is MBL's economy is going to be nuts here. Because Tato doesn't have a dock. This is the thing about Black Forest. There's only two docks on each, or two ponds on each side. And so in MBL's case, he's already Kelt, so he's already got that nice and dark he's rushing Eko. doubt. He's not going to Tato. He's going to drush doubt. That's smart. Oh, man. Yeah, and unless you is, die. <laughs> it, this unless is so die. smart. And look at Doubt trying to bring in three boars right now. Jordan's helping him with the scout. So that'll be good for Doubt. A lot of people think Black Force is all about the booming, but those forward walls and the positioning is always important. I love how Aftermath have opened here. Uh, apparently, I forgot to update the score. Sorry, but yeah, th if this Drush hits Doubt on the dock, he's got two villagers there, and this could be really bad. So what about Dro the civs here, Dave? What do you think about Celts, Burgundians, Mongols versus Celts, Mongols, and Teutons? Um, I would prefer Mongols, Celts, and Teutons, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. Over over the Burgundians pick from Tato. But Tato is, it's really open on this side. As MBL sends a, vill a YOLO villager out to try and get these boars, and Tato's actually gone for some militia as well. <laughs> MBL will arrive at the back of Doubt Space with his militia. Doesn't go for that dock villager. You know, the positive here for Doubt is he is Mongols. He brought in all the boars. He does have fish, and then he's got loom already. So I feel like the Drush, it took so long to get here. Doubt shouldn't take heavy losses to this. He should be able to deal with this. And then MBL might be surprised on the other side because he's not scouting Tato at all. Yeah, and Tato's going to get all six of those boar. So oh, I would boy. I, honestly, I would take that over a pond where MBL only has one fishing ship. Yeah. And MBL's farming now. Okay, he does. Why not make fishing ships right now he's drushing dave and this is where the damage control comes in i would say damage control is one of the things that doubt can occasionally struggle with but he does a great job doesn't lose the fills but obviously did need gold to go fast castle he actually only needs six gold to have enough gold to go fast castle so i think he can pull that off 
as the Drush now hits MBL, and Jordan Scout is also here. And for MBL, he was not expecting this at all, like we said, and he's going to lose a villager at least, you'd think. Nice. Uh, managed to save them so far. He continues chasing after them with the weak vills, typical MBL style. Uh, and in typical absolute MBL style, he's housed, and he's making a house with four villagers. That's This pressure is so worth it, then. And he's also added more militia here, Dave. So he's spending more resources. He's adding more militia. Meanwhile, Tato is just going to wall that area up with the boars behind. Good job from That's MBL not to lose anything yet, I guess. Yeah, great job there. And he, he keeps the militia at the lumber camp. He's got another militia on the way, so he should be able to defend against this. Maybe we'll lose one villager eventually. But he's going to have four fishing ships. Tato, though, with all that free food from mm -hmm. the boars. Once he gets this walled off, feels really good. MBL is back on the gold once again from Doubt. Doubt manages to wall it off. And the first two player or the first player on the way to the castle age is actually Leary that we haven't talked about at all with the Mongols. He's gonna have a good uptime. And he's gonna continue to push in the deer there. And <laughs> what's the strategy for him? Just immediate TCs? Leary Leary sent two to stone, but I think it was just so he could stonewall and boom. Yeah. Um, two to stone normally could indicate a castle. I'm just loving how right now Tato's like, all right, well, I can't kill your vills, but you're going to have to make more than three militia to attack me here if you want to keep your fishing ships working. So that dock is going down, and MBL does have to make two more militia just to save his fish. This drush, this is like the classic drush. Nowadays, when militia are made in Dark Age, you don't see like, uh, it. Pelliers are always trying to kill villagers, but a couple years ago, we'd always say the only reason you do that is to force reactions and to force idle time, and I think it's been worth it for Tato. Why is Hart so late? Mm. Like, he had the villager forward doing some stuff. Well, I guess he had two vills forward. Okay, yeah. and he added fish. So I guess it's not the worst thing in the world. They should bring those boars in, though, for Leary. <laughs> the three in the middle. That would have been really nice for him. Yeah, I'm just wondering if Hart will ever be tempted to do anything with the two vills, because there's no stone walls there for Jordan. And if they were to run in, they would have access to Doubt. It's almost like Doubt's expecting it, though. He does have a stable. Well, I mean, MBL has the Drush there, too. Yeah. Like, they could get in if they wanted to. Doubt sees the Drush. Is probably hearing that Tato has annoyed MBL. And this is this is where the Drush will likely end. Tato's got three weak militia. And MBL's Kelt, so he's got the speed now, but... Now, two villagers are still chasing. I, I think if you compare what Tato and MBL have done so far in this game, Tato's done more, and Tato has had less. He had to yep. work for the boars. He did not have a pawn. And there's the first knight from Doubt. So the militia will need to run away. They won't get any value there. Mm -hmm. Leary immediately goes for two TCs. Jordan is still on the way up. Doubt goes for a second TC. At least they've, you know what? At least they've harassed the Mongol player, though. Yeah, I agree. And their Mongol player is booming up behind it. If there's any Civ that you want to safe boom with in BF, it's probably Mongols. I agree. And if Leary, Leary, as he goes for the fourth TC, gets up to a better Mangadai production earlier, he can actually wipe Jordan. I agree. Yep. Or go right through to the middle to Doubt. I think Jordan is going to have to absolutely roach it up. Just, like, defend and never mm -hmm. die whenever that comes. But this right side, man, as you see the stone walls from Tato, it is not going to end there. MBL's wide open, and Tato's got a lot on stone. So I'd expect Tato to drop a castle and go for Coustier, and I don't see what, what MBL can really do against even Doubt's Knights right now as they're coming over. Imagine if Coustier come into MBL's base, and that could even be with a forward castle. See, you've said that the correct pronunciation is Coustier. I don't think it is. I it, think it's Coustillier. I used to say Coust... Wait, what, crap. Now I'm all confused. No, no, no. No, there's no... You don't pronounce that end portion. Who told you that? Ornlu. Ornlu told you that. Yeah, and you're going to sit here and act like Ornlu doesn't like do heavy research on that stuff. Ornlu's spot on with this. That's, that's what Ornlu said. He made a video with pronunciations... So if I'm wrong, I blame Ornlu, but I don't think I am. And also, there is a push coming in the middle. We can okay. use our separate pronunciations. At least That's it's not fine. as bad as the days in like 2016 where I legitimately called licks likes, okay? For like a week or two, and then I backtracked on that one really quick. Likes. <laughs> this is this is uh, this is a problem for Doubt, right? Because Doubt 
is trying to full boom. And like you said, Leary's got the cleanest boom ever. So I think this is definitely prepping a situation for Aftermath to possibly have the Mongol player in the better spot. But MBL clears up Doubt's Knights. I'm sure Doubt was distracted, and MBL wants to go Siege Monk push behind a boom. But the stone walls are there. The defensive castle for Tata was the choice. So we'll shift our focus towards Doubt. And look at this. Hard is coming in with Siege Push with Monks. And the good thing here is that he's walling off Jordan. So it, Leary is not involved in any of this. Exactly. MBL and Hart are distracting... Not really distracting Jordan, but they're going to wall him off now and cut him off from the rest of the team. So they're, it's essentially like the two of them bothering three people. And behind this, Leary gets a free boom. So if Leary is in a fa is in a good position in early Imperial Age, he can wipe Jordan. Mm -hmm. He can wipe everyone, honestly. Look at his boom. 62 villagers, untouched. And he's on four TCs right now. Yep. And this, is, this comes back to the forward walls. So when everyone's like, why do they invest so much time into walling? That's why. Because you can get away with certain things. This would never have been a possibility if the walls would have just been up in the choke. And I don't have a lot of confidence Dow can stop this. Like he, he can't afford enough scouts. Even if he does that, the spearmen are there. And yep. he, he also can't afford a castle yet. So he's probably going to lose you this. Will... Oh, wow. Jordan is not walled off. He kills the villager with his own mangonel. Okay. So there's one tile still open there that might come into play. He's also got a mangonel to take out the walls. Doubt will try and shoot the mangonels from Hart. Good micro there. Wow. Hart trying to convert one scout with all of his monks. He does get the scout. This that was is great so good. stuff from Hart. Yeah, really, really good. Yeah, like Doubt did a really smart thing there too. He actually went in with the scouts at the same time as he went in with the siege, hoping that Hart would micro the monks, but not the siege. And both happened there as we have a pause. So say what you will about Tato's uh damage against mbl we look at the economy right now tato at 43 villagers mbl also at 43 villagers yep. mbl has five fishing ships behind this as well so you can tack that on i guess the advantage early from tato is that he had the eco upgrades a little bit sooner but yeah mbl will find or have problems with these castilia as they come in though and doubt's gonna have problems right after they unpause with redemption being researched and he's gonna lose his manganel here most likely he doesn't MBL. lose it actually oh mbl oh. getting hit by the coustier this is that's like the worst possible time for for the pause for a lot of players here and yeah. mbl's gonna lose his siege oof lots of everything no Jordan's building up towards the second castle, Dave. That's also why he doesn't have as many vills. He's going for the 2TC approach. He did actually add the third, as I said that, but expect a forward castle on those two golds of MBL's base if he gets the opportunity. Having, like, putting the Mongol player over, under this much pressure is so good for your team if your Mongol player has a free boom. Yep. And look at Leary's villager count. 88 right now. The next best in the game is 63 from Jordan. Yeah, and Jordan, 75 total eco, of course. But he's also the sieve that tends to get pretty hard countered by the Manga Dice. So if he wants to help right now, as the siege does get converted, redemption finally pays off. If Jordan's going to help, he's probably going to help with infantry, because the siege will just be converted. And if he helps with infantry, the Manga Dice will probably be there for Leary. I'm, I think Tato needs to do a lot of damage to MBL because otherwise yep. I just don't see what on earth they do against all this. No, Doubt's going for a defensive castle back. He still somehow has 61 vills, so mm -hmm. credit to Doubt for surviving here, but he's constantly repairing his TC. Economy is kind of in shambles versus the other Mongol player, and now Jordan is forced to delete a Mangonel as the Monk comes in from Hart, who has redemption at Hart has done a really great job with so this sick. push, and he's, oh, yeah. he's adding a, a third TC behind this, too. Hart, Hart's the MVP right now. Like, Hart has done so much. His boom is also really a. good. But, Here yeah, the uh, the response from Tato, this obviously means MBL can defend himself, expect a defensive castle for him, and let's see how many conversions come in. Tato doesn't have that many. He's only got six. And there's five monks, so he could just lose everything here. I don't think he can actually engage against this right now. Leary's going to come through the middle. Yeah, exactly. And Leary is on the way to Imp. Leary is at 107 villagers right now. He's working on his second castle. Tato going for that fourth TC. MBL safe for the time being. And he's go MBL's going up. So I think Tato is going to be quite busy mm -hmm. on the other side and unable to really help his team. 
Wow, Aftermath are just stomping them with every decision. Like, the populations are close, but this game is really not close at all. <laughs> you have the Kel player go, trying to go light cap to deal with this. You have MBL with the forward castle, and he's just going to treb Tato down if this happens. Here comes Tato to respond to it. See if MBL reacts. He should. Yep, he's going to say thank you very much. Just sick, sick plays here from Aftermath on both sides. He gets both of them. And he's got one in. He's got three Castillia of his own. Forward castle, up the imp first. Immediate elite Manganite from Leary as soon as he hits imp. Oh boy, this is going to be a pain train for GL. Holy. I think this is going to be. I, I, I do not see how they can respond to this. Tato dies. That will die. And then Jordan has no chance either because Jordan is going light cav with Kelts. And then Hart can actually. At this point, he doesn't need to do any more. Hart could just free boom at this point. Mm -hmm. You could have MBL get a pretty good boom behind this with, uh... Because all he wants to do is open up with Trebs. He's going to be completely fine. And, and poor Doubt, man. I mean, he I think he's had a pretty good game since the early mistakes. But credit to Hart for running through with those two villagers. And oh, it all turned into this. That Castle Foundation tattoo. That's not the, that's not the vibe you want, my friend. Oh, it. it might even fall. It might even fall to the Castle Fire from MBL. Oh, it was so close, dude. <laughs> it was so close. A Tato will not be happy to see MBLs in the Imperial Age. Tato is going to say that I don't know what to do here. <laughs> I don't know what to do here. <laughs> He's got a slight eco lead. He obviously can't complete that castle. He's got some rams in the siege workshop, but I think he'll realize it's a little too late to have any effectiveness with that. I wish we had stats that would tell us how much wood Doubt has put into repairing this one TC, because it's got to be well over a thousand right here. And yeah, the it's GG's call. It probably is. Yeah, yeah, that was just a stomp, dude. Well played, Aftermath. And it's like, MBL's Drush didn't even accomplish that much, except delaying, it just delayed Doubt. And everything <laughs> was focused on targeting the Mongol player, while Leary had a free ride. I like how Doubt it tried to fantastic. use his Mangadai right before calling the GG, yeah. <laughs> just to see what would happen. And, of course, it didn't work out too well. Yeah, um, you know, I'm with you, Dave. And I think, you know, the civs were definitely a little bit better. It's not the first time we've seen Burgundians used for GL. It seems like they don't want to use three top, top-tier Black Forest civs. But mm -hmm. I still think the gameplay was just superior here for uh, for Aftermath. And we kind of talked about Tato a little bit in between the sets about how he's he's the master of win conditions. Well... Here it was all about Aftermath, recognizing their win conditions, sticking to their mm -hmm. roles, and it was all through that little Monk Rush, an amazing Monk Siege push from Hart, and then that crazy boom for Leary. And Hart sending two villagers forward to that middle area right away, too. I think, honestly, Leary's role, he had a great boom and his economy was insane, but that's kind of like the easy mode yeah, of yeah, this I agree. game, right? I agree. Hart did all the hard things. He sent the villagers forward, got the walls up early, provided pressure, and then went for the Monk Siege and didn't lose barely anything mm -hmm. in the Monk Siege push, even though Doubt was sending in scouts towards him. Doubt had Siege of his own. Really great stuff. And then MBL surviving on the other side after basically like a failed Drush in there and having to deal with a Drush as well from Tato. Super impressive. Yeah, I, I, I think we've said everything at this point. And then poor Jordan. I don't think Jordan had a bad game at all, but it's just no, he, he couldn't he contribute. Couldn't, you're Celts. You can't do <laughs> you anything. You can't do anything, exactly. You need another, like, two minutes to get your eco sorted, to get all your siege techs in and everything, and it's just not in the time window here, so. Yeah, you know it's a pretty good game when we're sitting here and we're just like, yep, you can't beat that. You cannot yep. beat that. And, and, like, Aftermath recognized it pretty early, so well played to them. And now it's tied up 1-1 in the finals. And at least we don't have good. that lingering question of uh, why did Aftermath pick Black Forest? Yeah. Because if they would have lost, then Hart's point earlier of picking that map maybe being a mistake would have been correct. I love the fact, I love the fact they tossed in Hart for that too. Yeah, I like agree. Hart, Hart is, has played so much Black Forest, he's got it pumping through his veins, right? <laughs> like I'd love to go back and listen to their strategy choices and wh whether it was Hart's idea to go down through the middle and try and wall off like really forward there and pressure doubt. Well, I see the sieves, and once again, Nikov has subbed out for Hart, so we need to change all of our information. Woo! 
Yeah, let's go. And it's going to be Turks for both teams. Tutans for Jordan. Uh, Poles for Tato. Ethiopians for somebody. And then Burgundians for Nico. Okay. Now, I'm, I'm hoping the next team game tournament we cast, this is not an issue. I'm going to have to talk to Capturage about this. This is a bit much, but we've got it, man. We've got it. We're, we're experts. So Turks is a sieve I actually forgot about. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't expecting that, and I wasn't expecting Ethiopians either. I know Gamer Legion have used that in Black Forest before, but to see I, Aftermath go for it is a bit surprising to me. Like I always say about Ethiopians, not very fond of the sieve. I think they're a little overrated for what they are, but when you put them in Leary's hands, suddenly I'm a big fan. Yeah, <laughs> I'm a yeah, huge yeah. fan. Because Leary can just make them work, and uh, he is phenomenal with them, and he's going to be great on the flank there. MBO with Turks on the flank is always dangerous. And then, of course, the epic boomer sieve here. Nikov with Burgundians. you got to finish the game quickly, though, if you have mm -hmm. Burgundians. Because if you're matching up against Teutons, the Burgundian Paladins don't feel as impressive as the Teuton ones, for sure. Oh, man. I'm really excited to see this. So I think that this is all going to be about how the, side, the flanks play out. Because Turks can be so effective and then so poor, depending on how things go so a common yeah. thing with turks is you can drop a castle and you can go janissaries and then you could take map control and maybe go fast in but someone like doubt might like to just boom with turks and try and get into a better late game comp than janissaries and the hussars and cav archers mm -hmm. so if i had to guess right now i'd say mbl does go for the castle does go aggressive and then maybe doubt plays a little more passive but like i said that aggression for mbl may or may not work and then that boom for doubt could easily be punished or be what ends up helping him against the Ethiopians. I wonder what the strat is here. Like, you don't want to go for a 1TC fast imp with Turks, right? You Not in a two. 3v3 team game. I think you yeah, could go two, two because everyone's going to go have castles at around the time a 2TC fast imp would happen. And you, the insta bombard cannon thing with a little bit of cavalier support from your pocket is just so strong. The problem is that there's going to be Cavalier from the other pocket, too. True. Yeah, which is why you need some Janissaries there, I think. Yeah. You're just relying on being faster than the uh, the Knight production from the enemy pocket. Because if the Knights ever show up there, that could be your downfall. Mm -hmm. It's a common counter in 1v1 against Turks Fast Imp. That's why it's not one of like the best civs in Arena 1v1. is because you can just simply build up Knights and wait for them to push in. Now, If they don't go for Monks first, anyway. On Tato's side, we have the Poles. The Poles receive some gold income when they mine stone, which is an eco bonus you almost always want to take advantage of. And it's a sieve that you almost always want time, too, so you can place farms around your full works and get 10% of those farms' food. So I feel like for Tato, we could easily see a tower rush here. Uh, Nikov is probably going to boom, so Nikov is not going to be supporting MBL at all. You are a little terrified that MBL might go for Janissaries, which I think would dominate the Poles early. So, go Tower Rush, start to batter down the walls. I know it hasn't been hugely effective in this tournament, but I can see it strategically making sense to delay MBL as long as possible. MBL is both the gold's back, though. True. And yeah. the stone, like, not near his walls. So, if he walls for far enough forward, he can actually counter the Tower Rush quite well with this map. I think Tato will do that, Dave. He's getting Loom right now, and he's gone up really fast here. This is a really fast uptime. 19, 19 pop, population. Wow. Yeah, and you normally send four of those villagers forward. He's definitely going to be going aggressive. I would love to see Jordan bring his scout with Tata right now because he's done pushing deer. And if you get in, then you've got two scouts on MBL plus the villagers. That would be a good idea. And there go the vills. So he's sending five villagers forward. Like you said, when he collects stone, he's also going to be collecting gold at the same time. Five gold for every ten stone you bring in. Which is just... <laughs> like, I feel like we still don't value how OP that is. <laughs> Honestly, especially on mixed maps. Or maps like Arena. Just so, so good. Polish eco is genuinely nuts. It's just the fact that yeah. their options do struggle. So, it doesn't lend itself well to going super late into these types of games. Because no matter how cheap your units are, they are still weaker units. Now, I love this from Tato. A lot of people would go two or three on stone. But if you think about it, you've got one on stone that's bringing in stone on top of already 200. 
He's going to have 250 stone when he needs it here. He's going to have to build the first tower and batter his way through. And then the timing's perfect. So I like the fact that he hasn't gone too heavy on stone. It might seem like a, a very small thing, but it's actually a big detail when you only have 18 villagers right now. Is Zembio like in a raid right now? His scout has been inactive for so long. He hasn't scouted anything outside of his base. Mm -hmm. Might be playing World of Warcraft. He notices now the villagers battering down his wall. I actually think and, he expected uh, it. Yeah, maybe, but what? I, I don't know what's going on with the scout. Anyway, it he's going to be able to put the palisades behind. I think it would die to Tato's scout, so he's like, I don't want to take any risk here. A great reaction from MBL, so he's just going insta palisades. This is where you start to really question your decision of your Tato. You're like, do I take the other stone wall? Do I take the palisades? What do I do as MBL goes to stone now? And we'll see if this delays his FC at all. MBL's the type of guy to, like, not get loom in this situation, too. <laughs> Just be like, I can't expend that amount of resources. I need to go off the Castle Age fast. He's walling behind now, and he has gone to stone. And like I said, this uh, this base setup, really, really nice for him, actually. In, in terms of most arena maps, a lot yeah. of times your stones are forward, right? So it's, it's... going to be good enough to defend for now, anyway. Yeah, and, and most likely MBL is going to be able to zone this out with his own towers. So great job with the Palisades. I guess what hurts for MBL is he's going to arrive to Feudal, and he's got one farm. He's got none on berries, and he doesn't mm -hmm. have the food or resources to go up. So I think this is already accomplishing what Tata wanted to accomplish, is he's going to start to farm at home, and he just wanted to delay that castle drop from MBL. Yep, and MBL goes for two towers immediately. To counter the push from Tato, and Tato is going to leave right away. MBL goes for a market. No, Tato's going for a tower there? What? <laughs> and, no, and they're deleting towers, so MBL deleted his counter tower. Tato goes for another one. <laughs> now Tato deletes again. I love that. That was so funny, because MBL didn't want to commit to these towers if he didn't have to. And then Tato forced him into it anyway. So he's like, yeah, have fun. Waste your stone. Waste your villager time. And he's going to place another tower, which, I mean, at this point, these towers aren't going to accomplish a whole lot. Yeah. But uh, we'll see, man. On the other side, Doubt is going fast castle into a castle of his own. And we have Leary with an archery range, and Leary's going to go crossbow. So <laughs> Doubt might be tempted to walk forward and drop it on Leary's base, hoping that, that Leary's That would be very moving. in character. That would be super in yeah, character yeah. for Doubt. He doesn't have Loom yet either, so let's see if he remembers that. Before he goes forward, I think he's going to go for a more oh, defensive no castle. Oh, no way. Though. MBL tried to save his scout, and he ran it into Nikov's base. And Doubt and Jordan followed. So now there's two scouts in Nikov's base, and Nikov doesn't have Loom. <laughs> Nikov does Nikov's not have probably, Loom. <laughs> it's probably like, MB, why'd you bring out? <laughs> I, like, I genuinely think he made that barracks. Because he rushed it down. I think he made the barracks to make a spearman just because of that. So I would be so pissed if I was Nikov right I now. It, honestly, I looked at that scout and I think it was the auto scout because MBL didn't use his scout for so long at the beginning of the game to even explore anything. And I think he just clicked it on auto scout while he was defending and it went in there. So anyway, Nikov and Leary both getting up to the castle age. Leary has his scout patrolling in front of Doubt's base. He knows... The potential for Doubt to come out with a castle. And uh, he's going to go for a second TC. Nikov also goes for a second TC. Okay, well. MBL with another tower, too, to defend. Yeah, MBL just worried about this. Because what you could have is you could have... If they open you up and you don't have walls, there could be night pressure coming into your base, and that's the last thing mm -hmm. you want. Daniel has never been afraid of making extra towers either. Okay. He's never been afraid of the additional stone cost. Doubt's base. Will the crossbows range those villagers? He's got no loom. Leary? Why Leary is Leary is going being... back? He's waiting for the villagers to come out. He is, Maybe isn't he? He, show... he doesn't want to show the crossbows to Doubt. He's oh, looking. Wow. Oh, his scout was it. Imagine if his scout was on the other side. Mm -hmm. It was on the right side instead of the left. He's going to be able to see the castle foundation. He's going to be able to see the villagers building it. They're well within range, but his crossbows now are out of position. And he X's it now for the other team. And he sends the crossbows back to try and deal with the villagers from Tato. Well, I will say this. Doubt losing his scout means that he can't tell his teammate Tato that there are crossbows mm -hmm. out there. 
And so I think that might be, have been the other reason why Leary was indecisive, because he's like, oh, villagers, I should go kill them. But if Leary goes back, which he's now doing to defend himself, I guess this has overall worked out for Gamer Legion so far. Just really funny. And also, Jordan typed an 11. I don't know why he typed an 11. But he's laughing. He's on voice chat with his teammates, so maybe he just wanted to get the full experience here. Hmm. What do you think of Tato investing into more towers? Like it or hate it? I don't mind it. It's going to take MBL time to leave, right? Mm -hmm. But maybe Tato sees MBL in the corner here. Maybe Tato wants to wall him in. It could do that. I mean, I think there's also a possibility he's placing these towers so he could uh, comfortably build a castle. And he's maybe. maybe he chops that tree, right? And he wants to place it right there. And he's worried crossbows will come in behind him. I don't know, but he is going to castle drop MBL, and MBL, I mean, his eco's looking good, but his uptime's was, not. Honestly, he was really late to click up to castle age, but look at his res right now. He yeah. could go for a castle, and then he could go straight up to imperial age. I agree. And if, and if Tato forward castles him, that could be really bad for Tato. There was always the possibility Tato tries to go fast imp as well. He's got a lot of farms around full works with potential for more. And then doubt MBL pressuring will go Leary fast him. on the other side. MBL is going to go fast him. And there's the Siege Workshop. Doubt brings in a Relic. I saw Nika bringing in Relics earlier. Where are the crossbows for Leary? Okay, they're back here. He's got a few. Actually, he's got a lot more queued up in that Archer range. And he's getting Ballistics too. So Leary's going to fight this back. He's just waiting till all his upgrades are in. 4 TC for Jordan. 4 TC for Nika at basically identical times. Both have incredible sieves for Eco. And Tato, ooh, is he going to go castle drop? I think it's a little late, actually. I wish if he was going to castle drop Nikov, I wish his village would already be there. Yeah. Um, but I think that's what he's going to do. I just, it's not every day you see Tato this indecisive. He should have left a long time ago. There's the castle for MBL. Tato is going to be going up pretty soon, and MBL is going to be going up pretty soon, too. Mm -hmm. So, MBL has potential to help Nick off the crossbows now from Leary pushing back the force from Doubt. Doubt is on one TC. Leary is adding his third right now. So, Leary has the eco advantage over Doubt. And right now, Doubt has no ability to do damage to Leary. I'd love to see Doubt bring his Janissaries across the map right now. You can push Leary. I think there's a big argument for that because you are really far behind in economy. But then if you lose their... What does that give you? I think if you pressure Nikov and make Nikov's life hell, then Jordan could maybe carry with his Paladins later on. A bit similar to how they pressured the Mongol player a lot in game two. And do the same up. thing here. He's the first one up. Tato, a lot of res in the bank. Tato is waiting for the castle to complete before he clicks up. So MBL will have an advantage. Obviously, MBL gets a, a free chemistry too, which mm -hmm. means he can go for immediate bombard cannons and a trap if he wants to. And Doubt is now pushing in here. <laughs> Doubt's got to be nervous. He knows the crossbows are there. He's waited till he has two mangonels. Because he, I think he doesn't trust his micro against Leary here. Yeah, I, there's definitely... They played against each other enough times, and Doubt said it enough times where you know that he's not the most confident going into micro battles against the kid here. But you also have to know that Doubt recognizes he has to. Like, if he sits yep. back, he's in trouble, so... See Doubt go for it here. And he's doing a good job keeping the Maganels near his uh, his Janissaries. The Janissaries can outrange the uh, Crossbowmen. So he's going to shoot at them from max range, kind of bait the Crossbows in. Leary, though, behind this, adding more Crossbows, adding Maganels of his own. And I think it's smart to wait until he has two or three to engage against Doubt. What I like about Leary's play there is he showed his Crossbows enough times where it gave him time to mass his second Maganel. Yep. So he oh bad positioning though. Doubt attack around him. Oh, it's a big shot from Doubt. Well played. So not so good for Leary with his crossbows, and now he could be in trouble because Doubt can take out that siege no problem with Janissaries. Leary was housed anyway. He needed to lose a few units. Tato is gonna <laughs> he's gonna die though, Dave, because the castle against Nikov was way too late and does nothing now. Yep. So Doubt really needs to do more damage against Leary, and he is. He took out the Siege. He should just be forcing fights against the crossbows constantly here. 
Leary still has one Manganel garrison in that siege workshop. I don't <gasps> think he realizes. Okay. Oh. Oh, oh my, my god. god, dude. And he's going to lose more here as well. Oh my god. Doubt. He was doing so well. He was doing so well. It's just like Siege 101. Never move into your opponent's base if your units are stacking. <laughs> uh, and, and he is imping as well, Dave, which means he can make mm -hmm. bomber cannons, which is good, but that's not so good. And then Tato, he's just going to be trebbed back. By Nikov, and I think MBL yeah. is going to kill Tato badly. Both the flanks are really struggling. They're just going to have to hope that Jordan can beat Nikov yeah. here. And Tato is delaying Nikov a little bit, but Nikov is up to Imp. And Tato only has that forward castle and two monasteries to hold this position. Mm -hmm. It's not enough, especially with MBL going to be pushing his base. And I love the decision from MBL to go right after Tato instead of going after that forward castle. Also, I love the second TC. You know, it keeps your eco a little healthier. You're still able to to put pressure on. The Tato did open up with a Treb. And uh, excuse me for forgetting that. So that does put Nikov under a lot more pressure than Jordan. Mm -hmm. And Jordan will now pick a side as he's about to complete Cavalier. It was a little late to rely on upgrades Jordan. here. This all relies on Jordan. Jordan had a fantastic boom. He's not distracted like Nikov is all relies on him and his production and neat mbl goes for another tc tc forward why is secure this area why is jordan going for the castle age attack instead of the imp armor right now that feels really bad you should almost always prioritize your melee armor Bastillier coming in from nikov it's a big investment there to toss away all those units but he does get both trebuchets he loses all of his army though and now he's got to go for quick walls behind as Jordan is coming in with these knights. Nikov manages to wall there. I don't think there's another hole. So Jordan won't be able to get in. That's great stuff from Nikov. And MBL with a forward castle here. Tato is in trouble at home. He's in big trouble. Jordan needs to help him now. Jordan also will be hearing from Doubt that maybe Doubt can do something. So maybe a reason for Jordan to go to that side. I'm loving the pressure from Tato. At, at least since he's dead at home, he's doing something on the front. He's going for mm -hmm. monk upgrades, and Jordan were to get to Paladin, which is now on the way. MBL's only got 59 villagers. If he doesn't have choke points for his Janissaries, they could all die to Paladin. And good attack ground from Doubt. He didn't get any hits, but it was a bit unlucky there, I'd say. Leary's getting halb now first thing. I love this from Leary because he knows his biggest threat is Jordan. I don't understand why Nikov's not using his treb here. He's got one behind, mm -hmm. and he's not contesting this at all, and he's just letting Tato take down this castle for free, and he's actually adding a castle behind this. Nikov had 130 villagers, and now more cavalier are coming. Jordan could carry this. Jordan could easily carry this. Nikov needs oh, to hold no for way. a little while longer. Delete the farm and make a building there. You need to wall this in, my friend. Dude, the craziest thing about this is that Nikov is actually, he was so late to committing to cavalier. So he's been going coustier. So he also tried to get conscription out of that castle and that was denied. Bombard cannon down. Tato's going to continue his push. Leary's not pushing doubt and MBL is pushing Tato, but he's not even pushing the castles yet. So Gamer Legion, they've got a time window here. Yep. Leary, I think Nikov needs to delete the wall closer to Leary to let him into the base to help him defend. Leary yeah. is sending units over. There's Paladin now in the back of Nikov's base. He doesn't notice this. Where else is oh, he Oh, he went for the revolution. He went for the revolution. Are you kidding me? I don't know about that. I mean, it will certainly mean they clear this, but all of his villagers turn into military units. And that will mean MBL's that the military counts out. insane for AM. Paladin on MBL. MBL just lost four Bombard Cannons. He's losing his Janissaries. And Leary's uh, dying. Leary's Leary dying to doubt. Going to be dying to doubt. Let's see how much the Flemish Revolution can do. Nikov is building a couple extra TCs, but only with one villager each. And Dude. he's got 107 military. This, this was kind of a 3v2 because Tato could contribute very little. And now, even though Nikov's got a lot of military, Nikov just made this a 2v2. Because he will That's... not have the eco to make more than this. So when this dies, this could be hugely problematic. The castle is going to go down. All this military is going to be flooding over towards Tato's direction. But Jordan can kill this 
with his paladins. He's got 42 paladins on the field. I I also question Nikov going for Castillier instead of uh, going for the Cavalier upgrades earlier, right? He was just so slow to get there. I'm really very curious on how this develops now because the military count's insane. 175 to 64. And these mil Flemish militia are no joke. Now the tech itself and the fact that that happens the way it does, you could argue is a joke. But the units themselves, when you get there, 12 base attack isn't bad. And Nikov's getting infantry upgrades, so he can clear up some of the Paladin. But he can't really realistically support Leary. And Leary's fighting a 2v1 right now as Paladin show up from Jordan. There's still Bomber Cannons and Genistries from Doubt. And also MBL's not pushing anymore as Tato's trebbing him back. Leary is really struggling right now. Mm hmm it will have no Paladin support, Dave. It's only 22 villagers for Nikov. He needs to have a big eco again. That's the downside of this tech. And I think he was just so stressed, Dave. He said, I don't know what to do. and just went for it. Well, it did clear up the stuff in his base. Definitely. And now mm -hmm. the army is coming back over towards Doubt's side. Nikov is back up to 29 villagers. He's got nine in the queue. So he's trying to reproduce his economy here from five TCs at the same time. MBL has stabilized and MBL is at 80 villagers right now. Tato is only at 85, so he's not that far ahead. Mm -hmm. And there's still Flemish militia to protect him and Tato has to defend a forward castle. So AM is still in this game. It just feels like Jordan is gonna be in a position to carry pretty hard. He's gonna need a lot of paladins to support Tato. I like Tato. I wonder how the old book, the Castle Age old book, perform against the Flemish militia. I'm not too sure. But look at Jordan. He sees the bomber cannons underneath MBL's TC. It's gonna be super awkward to get under there. But if he kills those bomber cannons, which he will, Tato will stay alive. He's in 91 vils, even ahead of MBL at this point. Flemish rip. Our militia coming over to deal with Doubt. Doubt has five Bombard Cannons there. Leary trying to micro these down without getting sniped. Good micro so far. The Flemish militia are behind, so he's going to be able to clear up this force. Wow. But on the other side, like you said, MBL dying and Tato now coming forward with another castle. This game is kind of crazy here as Nikov is back up to 53 villagers. They've cleared up the forward pressure. Leary still has 80 villagers alive. That's more than Doubt. But Teutonic Knights now on the field. These will deal with Flemish Militia quite well, but the Arbalists are behind to kill them. Yeah, I think the concern for Leary is you've got 29 military. The concern for everyone on AM is they their, their highest eco count is 80, and that's tied for MBL and mm -hmm. tied for Leary. Jordan's got 50 more villagers than those two, and he's got an untouched boom. He's He's got all the map control. I just, I think they need to use these Flemish Militia and these ARBs with Leary right now to push back Doubt. Because if they don't, I see Tato being able to compete against uh, against MBL. And I don't think Leary's going to have, or sorry, I can't speak. The Nikov's going to have the ability to catch up in the boom in time. MBL now going to archery ranges. CA? CA or, can't be hand cannon, right? Can't be. It gives you a little more production than Janissary because of the castle situations, but... You're going to run out of gold. Actually, I'm saying that. He's got a 1,000 gold in the bank. He's not on gold with anyone right now. Mm -hmm. His only gold is the available is the one at the front and maybe the one at the side, which is still blocked off from a tower from Tato. The other side, Leary and um, Nikov. Going to be able to kill that Siege Workshop. There's two bomber cannons in there, so that's going to lose those. Doubt's bomber cannons have not been super effective this game. No. <laughs> it's the same no. as the siege earlier. He's not really a siege player. Let's put it that way. Oh, look at the paladin army coming across the field. Has Nikov rewalled? Kind of. Kind of. I'm... <laughs> There's burning houses there. This is going to be an issue. You have to imagine that Doubt and Jordan are communicating here, and Jordan is either telling Doubt, I'm not going to protect you, or Doubt saying, I can hold, but... Like the only risk with this situation is Doubt could die quickly to mm -hmm. Leary, but I guess the payoff's worth it because they know that Nikov's attempting this reboom. They don't want to allow it, Dave, and these Paladins are definitely going to break through here. Yeah, Nikov, there's one burning house there, and none of them are targeting that, apparently. <laughs> They're targeting the market. They're targeting the gates here, the mill behind. Nikov trying to wall that. He's not going to be able to do it. He adds a gate behind. He's just on pure damage control. 
right now, trying to wait for his Flemish Militia to return. You can see the Arbalist, the Halberdiers, the Flemish Militia. There's so much military coming back here. And Dave, you have artillery for both Turk players. MBL already researched it. He's starting to push with his longer range Bombard Cannons. And then you've got Jordan showing up to help Doubt, but Doubt's getting artillery. So great job from Jordan, man. He, he's able to pressure Nikov at the proper time. Now save Doubt, and I think he's going to be needed on Tato's side next. Yep. Nikov did get up, back up to 100 villagers after Flemish. And now he's going to go back down to around 60 villagers again. Mm -hmm. His entire eco is dying. His castle's going to die at home. There's a lot of units here from Leary and from Nikov to fight this back, but this means the pressure is completely denied against Doubt, and Doubt pushes forward once again. MBL did take out a forward castle. MBL is pushing Tato, but now Tato is going to wing Tassar. I like it. Just get something out there. Your Vil count's mm -hmm. really good. His farms are also amazing all over those full works. And you know Jordan's going to swing in here next. Uh-oh. Jordan coming. Oh, man. Those hand cannons not going to be... That's not it against mm -hmm. 40 paladins. It's funny how little the slow Teuton Paladins have... Or sorry, it's, it's funny how little lack of husbandry has mattered here because there hasn't been MBL. anyone else making fast units. MBL's like, oh, that amount of Paladins I could probably deal with. Oh, no, I can't deal with that. And I definitely can't deal with the additional ones coming in. Good attack rounds there to get what value he can. Actually, great attack rounds. Yeah, but, but at what cost? And yep. what cost? He gets pushed back. Tato's eco is fine. Jordan with very bold castles towards Nikov's base. I like how Nikov's still microing Flemish militia right now. He's got 32 of them, but... Jordan's got crenellations. It's no joke, these Teutonic castles. And that's no joke, that place that MBL has found himself with the hand cannons, but he's still going to lose all of them. Get some decent value, and here come the winged Hussar. MBL dead, but that gives Leary an opportunity to push out once again. <laughs> gives yep. Nikov an opportunity. Every single time GL focuses someone, they have to switch to the other side, but they're actually killing Eco, whereas AM has never touched any of the Eco from any GL members. And I think the important thing here is that there's also trade right now for GL. Mm -hmm. So they've had the Eco advantage. They're holding the position. They're trading to get more long-term gold. So there's still a chance, I'd say. There's still a chance for Aftermath because they're pushing Jordan's very bold castles down in the middle. Cool. And Leary's got a big force. But if they don't do it soon, I think they are indeed dead here. There was a hole in MBL's base. Rip. There's nothing you can do against this. Also, he only has hand cannons and TCs to defend. And the Hussars, he could, Tato can make these all day. Mm -hmm. Tato's got 69 on food. Nice. He's got tons of Hussars in the queue. He's fine. It's only Doubt. They need to save Doubt, and then I think this game is won. Can they do that against so many Arbalest and Halberdiers from Leary? I think they can. Jordan will complete the castle in the front. He sniped a couple trebs there. These castles do have crenellations, so they're controlling so much of the map. Can't be sniped down with Bombard Cannons. And, uh, oh boy, MBL is in deep trouble here. Leary oh. is going forward with the castle, but Jordan is shifting his paladins over again. Jordan has been <laughs> carrying this game. Dude, what? How many paladins? I can't wait to see that stat at the end. Jordan has made so many paladins. Jordan's man. Yeah. Super strong. I, I also think we're going to have that conversation of, yes, the Flemish Revolution saved Aftermath, but did it also kill them? <laughs> because Nikov just hasn't been able to do much I, ever since I then. I think he was he was already dead if he didn't do it, honestly. Maybe, maybe. I think the going into Castillier early kind of hurt him a lot. Yeah, possibly. Also, maybe Tato's castle did do a bit more than we thought it would. And as Doubt is switching into Cav Archers, which is a lovely unit here, you can tell Gamer Legion are just sitting here with patience. Like, let's wait till we get full upgrades. Let's wait till we get full pop. And then we'll take the fight because we are not under pressure. MBL is basically dying to Tata right now. He's losing a 1v1. Nikov's here to help with more Flemish Militia. Uh, but that won't last long. And the Leary's got to get a move on here. I don't think MBL would have called this a 1v1 after those 15 Paladin came into his base. <laughs> He's yeah. probably still thinking of it as a 2v2. But Tata's going to rip him. And uh, Doubt is now has heavy cavalry archer he's getting um sapahi yeah. sapahi i think 
And uh, he's going to be fine. An elite Teutonic Knight on the way from Jordan. Jordan can do anything at this point. They've got mm -hmm. He's got 20 trade cards. He's got Teuton Paladins. He's got the 100 HP Cav Archer support. So this is, little... they're just waiting. They're going to take this fight soon. They're going to mop it all up, even though it's a big force from Leary. I don't think, think MBL has called. told his team that he has 13 pop. I'm I'm fairly certain he said something. <laughs> but, but like not this specific number. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't want to discourage your team. You know, you just say, I'm dying. You don't say, I'm at 14 pop. Oh, maybe, maybe he does. Maybe he's asking to resign, I'm being told, so. I think this game has been over for a while, Dave. And Gamer yeah. Legion, they just didn't want to... They're playing with their food a little bit, you know, like a like a cat with a mouse. They didn't want to take a fight too early, and there you see it. The big mop up from Gamer Legion. And what a statement, Dave. What a statement. They knew exactly how they'd want Turks to be played. They denied that on MBL's side, I think effectively, at least long enough. And then Jordan Ivial outplaying the uh the other pocket on the other side, Nikov, who's had a very good run in this tourney. Gamer Legion respond, and they're up 2-1. Yeah, the forward castle from Tato on Nikov survived for a very long time and distracted his economy. And Jordan's eco was just unreal. Got Paladin super quickly. Managed to go into Nikov's space, forced the Flemish Revolution, and then wiped up MBL's stuff, wiped up Leary's stuff. He was all over the place. You remember in game two where you know, we talked about how amazing Leary was, and then you're like, well, it was also the easiest thing to do because he was completely untouched and he just yep. boomed. That's what you need to do for your teammates. And that's what Tato did for his teammate here, Jordan. By pressuring Tato, or sorry, by pressuring MBL, there's never any possibilities for MBL to hit Jordan. And then you had a castle drop on Nikov, which had Nikov on the back foot reacting. And then Doubt's opening against Leary was the same exact thing. So Jordan deserves all the credit. He had an incredible play, but really Doubt and Tato, uh, they set him up for that success. And that's how this tournament's going to have to... Uh, all right, this final is going to have to progress, I think, for both teams. I'm going to listen in to MBL just for a second to see what they're talking about. But why did you go revolution? Is that good? We're into the game now. I don't know if you are. Yep. Uh, MBL has gone for Koreans, and he went for Koreans yesterday, too, on this okay. map. Um, Nikov has gone for Indians as the pocket player. And then Leary has gone for Mayans. We see Mayans on the other team for Doubt as well. It's pretty far away. All these players are pretty far away from each other. And then pocket for GL Indians too. And then Ethiopians for Jordan. So Ethiopians against Koreans on the flag. And the rest of the civs are mirrored. Have we talked about it? I feel like Koreans are really good because of the free armor and if they're up against Archer Civ, which is what they're expecting here. MBL deleted a villager. He deleted a villager. How? Why? What? So they're going to do a restart here, but they might want to wait to the fourth minute. The smart move is to wait to the fourth minute because you have to call your res before four. I don't understand why he would delete the villagers otherwise. I imagine that was intentional. He deleted another vill. Yeah, yeah, he deleted Vils, so they're going to wait until they're 3 calling a re anyway. to yeah, call he, a restart. He deleted another Vil. <laughs> He's doing it for our entertainment. They're waiting for the restart here, folks. The thing He's is, not trying to tank his team or anything, and they call a re. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, if we're going to talk, uh, that is funny, obviously. Yeah, like you said, he's doing it for entertainment. <laughs> but I think, truthfully, if you delete your Vils, your score dips, and so the opponent might be like, oh, they had a really bad start. Let's not call a re if we want one, so... It's yeah. whatever, though. So that's why? out of the way. So why would they have called the re? I don't know. Mm. Maybe I look like a late TC from Leary, or he was deleting Vils. As, I, what? Where they is all his, deleted his Vils. Villagers? They all deleted Vils. Um, you know, sometimes you delete your Vils because you don't want your opponent to look. Like when, when you resign here, you don't want your opponent to look and see what you're doing ah. in terms of your build order. But I still don't think that there's really anything else you can do but go to shorefish this stage so <laughs> it's it's just don't let whatever. him see it <laughs> don't let him see we're on shorefish yeah as someone said That's why funny. not call it immediately because you have one of them right yep. so there's been instances there's one time and it was only a couple years ago but at like 357 because you have to call it before four both teams like typed re at the same time right so the first person to say it they use yep. their re and so if you wait 
there's a chance that maybe they will call it early. Um, they Nikov waited. A bit. Had no, oh, Nikov had no fish in his pond, apparently. Oh, really? So it's an admin. Oh, it might have been an admin re. Yeah. Really? Let me. I gotta look back at that real quick. That's what my chat's telling me, anyway. It, it could be because the game ends and then there's no animations. Um, yeah, maybe. Let me see. But they yeah, might you're right. also be listening to him, right? There so. is there is a pond with no fish. You're right. There was one shore fish. So that that actually should not be a restart yeah. for Aftermath. That should be an admin restart. They should not have to waste theirs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they'll probably be telling GL that right now. Yeah. Or the admins will be telling them as long as they're, you know, aware of the situation, which, which I'm sure Nova is. Sure. Yeah. Well, in that case, the whole waiting game didn't matter, so the Ville Delete makes sense. Time for another cup of coffee. You have a minute. You're never going to get to leave, by the way. How much? That's all right. I'm used to it. Um, this is my third cup of coffee. I was going to say, dude. <laughs> I made a pot, so it's not like, you know, yeah. I'm making them individually. Yeah, I'm, I'm good with my one cup for now. Okay. But yeah, go ahead. Get your coffee. Um... We know what the sieves are going to be, so not too much to speculate on. We know what the positions will be. What was nice about what we saw there was the positions were somewhat standard. And in both the semifinals yesterday, we had some wonky positions because of Ville locations. So I'm hoping we have more of the standard positions. Because then we will see more restarts and players will keep making us wait here. Giving Dave more opportunity to completely dehydrate himself with coffee. We do actually have the game already. They have launched it up. I can hear Dave running from his kitchen to his to his office right now. I can hear him. He's trying Wait, to get back. Wait, did I not mute you? I don't know if I was muted or not. I have no clue. Yeah, I, I literally I no muted knowing. my mic, so I don't know <laughs> what you're hearing, bro. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I couldn't hear anything. I was joking. Oh, right. A joke from you, right? Yeah. Sorry, I, sarcasm could get better. Yeah, we're back here. Uh, you know, the, the sides have actually flipped a little bit from what we just saw. I'm going to now check the ponds because I'm paranoid to make sure there's actually fish. And there is fish. Cool. So Jordan's on the right flank playing Ethiopians. His pocket, of course, Tato playing Indians. Then you've got Doubt, the Mayans. And he played so good with the Mayans yesterday, Dave. Mm -hmm. It wasn't good enough for his team, sadly. And then he'll be up against Leary as the Mayans. So we've got a Mayans micro showdown between... The Lord and the Kid, and then a Nikob Pocket. He's Indians and Beal Koreans, so nothing new here. Yep. Nikov will have access to more pawns near him, I think. Tato's going to have to go forward for his pawns, but True. Tato is closer to the wood line at the back, which should help out if he's deciding to go for like 3TC mm -hmm. into camels or light cab or whatnot. I think the difference here is going to be how do they wall, because... It looked bad aesthetically, aftermath walling on this map yesterday, but it also mm -hmm. was really effective. And what they got by with was under making military early and just hiding behind their walls. So I think Tato, I've seen him play a lot in this map, whether it was with Kumins or Berbers or Indians, he loves to get a scout or two out. We'll see if Nikov wants to do that on the other side, and we'll see how Doubt fares here. Because I feel like for Doubt, you're immediately thinking, okay, I'm up against Leary, I have to go for numbers. Because if it's equal numbers, I'm not going to be able to out-micro him. Check the scouting real quick. And all players... Okay, so... No one's found anyone. Okay, the first person to find anyone is Leary, and he's going to identify where Doubt is. He sees the, the house right away, so the TC should be nearby, although he's going the wrong way with his goat. He'll know that he's relatively close. That's the two closest enemies to each mm -hmm. other. MBL and Jordan are going to have all the time in the world. They're so far away. Yeah. Also, because of the way uh, team positions works and it's based on color, not to mention they'll see the sieves, which is already assumed, but if one person finds the flank, they're going to be able to tell the other flank, hey, you're up against so-and-so. So at this point, Leary will just say, hey, MBL, you are up against Jordan as you probably thought you would be. Nothing too crazy here. You'll notice... As well, in general, it's normally going to be color six versus color one. And that's what we have. So 
You can kind of try and predetermine your Civ pick. If you're like, hmm, Jordan's going to be the one who goes for Ethiopians and you think Koreans are better against that, you can kind of try and guess it in the lobby if you want based on colors. Why is Tato like a villager behind here? Good question. It wouldn't be Loom. Probably just a late TC. Did he start more towards the middle, maybe? And he walked? Yeah, no one has any idle TC. To okay, that makes sense because he walked towards the edge. Yeah. So that's why he's a little bit behind. That makes sense. Well, no I... idle TC time for like anybody. Mm -hmm. And I did mention that Tato likes to make those scout numbers, but if you're closer to the edge, you're probably going to be walling up more than anything. So there goes Nikov. Nikov on the way up, and he's going to be the one adding military. 15 vills and on the way to feudal. This is pretty sick, but also maybe too fast. Yeah, he's not on food with many right now. He's on food with four, so he's trying to build up the wood he needs for the uh, production buildings. Yeah. This is the delicate balance, right? You can go up so quickly with Indians, but then you'll find that your stable is 30 seconds late because you have no wood or your yeah. market blacksmith, you can only afford one of them. And then you're going to be floating with 900 food in the bank waiting to click up if you're going for an FC kind of build. Yeah, I mean... It's tough to balance, but I think he's done it well. Yeah, right now I'm not loving it, but I'll have faith in Nikov that he's going to figure it out. Uh, just to clarify one thing, people are asking about team positions in Nomad. Yeah, so very fair point. Normally on Nomad starts where you don't start with the TC, it's kind of random. On this particular map, where your Vils spawned is still based on team positions. So that's why mm -hmm. you're able to, to kind of treat it like a normal land map in that sense. I think Leary and MBL might both just be going FC here. With Nikov the one going for early pressure. Okay. Because they're both they're both walling and they both haven't clicked up yet. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what Leary did last uh set we watched which was the semi he went and for, then he went for one at range, I think, FC. Yeah, one range, two TCs. He was super greedy. And wait, Leary's going to stone? Is he going to try Fast Castle Plumed Archers? I don't like this. I, this is not 2017 anymore. Yeah. I do not think this is meta, and I'm shocked to see Leary, of all people, trying this. And look at Doubt. Doubt is already in the Feudal Age in 10 seconds here. He's not on stone. He's on gold right now. Should open so range. So he should be going for Wait. Archers immediately. He didn't have a barracks, though, Dave. He didn't so. have a barracks. Okay. So I'm confused on both sides. And actually, if Doubt doesn't open with a range, which is the standard play here, Leary might not get punished by this at all. So maybe the Fast Castle into Plumed Archer play could actually work out for Leary. And it looks like Jordan's just going FC too. Okay. Plus 100 food, plus 100 gold for him when he makes it to the next stage. I love how he factored that into when he went to gold. He's gone to gold a bit. Uh, actually, he's gone to gold super early. I'm sorry. He's not even Dude. on the way up yet. Yeah, this is really weird for Jordan. He's mistimed this quite a bit, I think. It's now at the point that we have to look to MBL because we've been confused by three out of the four flanks. Yeah. So now we're looking at MBL. We're like, okay, uh, what's he doing? And he's going to go FC Wagons? And I actually like that a lot more than FC Plumes. What do we see Wagons pay off? Do you really against Wagons? I guess they can go into some monks or whatever. Pikemen aren't going to aren't going to be it. They can just get hit and run down. The crossbows are going to really struggle against it. These wagons build orders be are the just play. weird. I mean, what you do against wagons, it, this is the big question with any strong unique unit, right? People be mm -hmm. like, how do you stop conks? I keep dying to it. How do I stop war wagons? I keep dying to it. You apply pressure before they get there, mm -hmm. and which is what makes it so surprising to me that we're not seeing a little bit more aggression here from Jordan. I mean, maybe he will, maybe he will, but... I think MBL is going to get there comfortably, and I also think Leary is going to get the Plumed Archers comfortably because and of look at Nikov pressure from Doubt. Coming into Doubt's base, and Doubt's not going to be happy to see these scouts in here. He's not going to be able to complete the wall. Wow. Tato is chasing him around. Doubt has a villager trapped on the other side. He's got four villagers walling right now, and Nikov actually gets in through that house. Doubt only hit it once with the villager. He's going to lose a vill. Nikov applying a lot of good pressure, and this is the mirror matchup on this side between Leary and Doubt, and Leary is already on the way to the Castle Age. Nikov played so good in that semifinal yesterday. So good. And already, I'm liking the plumed archer choice more and more for Leary because he doesn't have to worry about archers hitting him. And 90 seconds, he can start building the castle. And I think MBL is going to have his castle too. This is going to be a sweet, sweet game for Aftermath.
Sneakoff holding Tatooine with his scouts. Tatu has seven on the field. Nikov has six. So if Tatu comes forward, there's opportunities for him to do damage. But it looks like Nikov is now walling up. So all the AM boys are going to be walled. This is a great play from them. Double FC and their pocket going for aggression. I just, I don't understand the late up times here. Like MBL being on the way to Castlage around the same time of Jordan shouldn't really happen in most cases. But mm -hmm. he will have archers. He will be able to move out and get crossbow and hopefully deny MBL's castle when he goes to place it. And it's going to be plumed archer, war wagons, plus camels. And Seems strong if they get them built up. And there's a hole into Jordan's economy between that house and the blacksmith. And he drops oh, down the gate, but there's geez. also a hole there. And now the scouts are in. He's going to have to quick wall his wood line, quick wall the villagers on fish. Oh, what a play quick from Nikov the there. Because Nikov knows that all the food villagers are not underneath the TC on this map. So the garrison wouldn't hurt him. What a great opening here from Nikov, man. And there's the castle for Leary at home. He's making outposts, so the archers were super late from Doubt. Doubt's not even up yet, dude. Doubt doesn't no, even click the castle. Doubt and Jordan have both been delayed by yeah. Nikov. And Tato's military got held at home, so he couldn't go forward to hit Leary or MBL. Doubt is harassing Leary a little bit, but he's going to see that castle. Or no, he's not going to see the castle. He's going to see it in a minute when it's complete. Okay, Tato needs to find damage because he has made a lot more scouts than Nikov. He's getting a lot of upgrades. If there's a hole in Nikov's base, Nikov could be in trouble. And I'm seeing a few gaps. There's a gap between his stable and the house. Yep. And that seems to be the only gap, actually. So will Nikov see this run past his gold? Because if he does, he should try and get a wall down there. And if he does, he's fine here. Nikov, he sees it. He'll be fine. Get a house and a palisade gate. Okay, perfect. Oh, gate. Great stuff there. Oh, if Tato went in there, he could have gated him off. That's actually entrap the scouts, but not to be. And Nikov is going to plug all of these random holes. So he's not going to allow these in. Nikov now gets to the castle age. He can start producing some camels to deal with this stuff. And uh, he's still harassing a little bit in Jordan's base. He's holding the archers at home. Oh, man. He's dude. actually killed one. Meanwhile, MBL has a castle going up and a TC. He's going to be on wagons, which is just so freaking strong against crossbows. Mm -hmm. uh, great job from Nikov, though, because the archers from Dow came over here. Nikov's teammates haven't had a lot of military to support him at all, but one of the best things about Nikov, I know we've seen some poor examples of it, too, in the arena game, but I really think he's a master of damage control. And he's a master of getting value with low numbers, and that's what he's done here. Leary's like, delete the house! I need to get in! Delete yeah. the house! My plumes! <laughs> yeah, and Doubt's archers... Man, Doubt's still not up. This is just... Honestly... We've seen a lot of sets with Gamer Legion in this tourney. I think this is one of the worst openings I've seen from Gamer Legion from the group stage on. This is a really bad game for them. Okay, the scout's finally going down in Jordan's base, but this was time that Jordan needed to be forward. Yep. With his allies or needed to be attacking MBL. MBL's going for a third TC and producing war wagons too. Why not? He's it hasn't be been so punished far at in all. front of Jordan. Yep. Now it's got to try and keep his army number high. If he were to lose these archers, then it'd probably be even numbers of plumes when comparing his crossbows to the uh, plumed archers from Leary. And this greed from Aftermath has paid off big time and very different from what we saw in the semis from both teams. Also, like, question marks about Tato here. He's still 45 seconds away from Castle. Nikov hey. went scouts as well, and Nikov was so much faster. He made more scouts... He then researched two upgrades, and he couldn't find the damage. A big investment. <laughs> I mean, uh, the eco aftermath's ahead, and I think their military is also stronger. This is going to be really tough for Gamer Legion now. MBL's halfway to another castle, too. Still on stone right now, building up the war wagons. He's not going out with those. He realizes that, based on the information probably from Nikov, that he's ahead of Jordan right now in terms yeah. of economy. Yep. So he's just going to build those up, wait for the pressure to come in. And Leary also building up Plumed Archers. Leary's still on stone with a few. He's added a third town center. This is going to be insane here for AM. I think it's very telling when you look at the military numbers and we're talking about how Gamer Legion is, is like so far behind. That normally should not be the case as Nikov. Got to be careful here with your camels. Yep. Gonna run Jordan coming Jordan. over to help, which is nice. Plumes are coming over from Leary. 
That's going to be a difficult army to fight. Plumes, usually the problem is you can't mass them, right? Mm -hmm. Crossbows are going to feel better than them, but now in similar numbers, the plumes have the mobility, and they should feel pretty good. But as long as Gamer Legion's army is at their base, I think AM's going to be happy because they have advantage in the economy so far. Tato finding some picks from Nikov on the left there. That's something. Getting more value from those scouts. And he kills about four villagers there, Dave, so that's pretty good for Tato. Still is behind, obviously, but they He's really needed that. He's 10 vils behind. Nikov's three TCs right now. Three TCs, tons of army. MBL hasn't even moved out, dude. He's just waiting. He didn't even research Bodkin yet. He doesn't need to. He's just going full Honestly, boom, full eco. He's going university now. He can build a second castle soon, and this is like the dream scenario with Koreans, right? You just show up with 20 war wagons. Yep. And it's like, okay, bro, do something. Tato now just getting horse collar, obviously. He can't rely on the fish forever, so he's mixing in the farms. That timing's good. It's just... Honestly, the pockets and the flanks have all been outplayed here by Aftermath. Gamer Legion needs to make their army mass mean something right now, and it's all coming over to Leary, who has a castle, of course. Yep. Easy to wall off the other side, too, so Gamer Legion's going to have to take a lot of time to run all the way around. Jordan's crossbows move forward, and he hasn't really known what MBL is up to. Now he knows what MBL is up to, as MBL's here with the <laughs> wagons. Hello! No ballistics for MBL, of course, but he's he's just taking his time here. 73 villagers versus Jordan's 59. And Jordan's probably kicking himself. I mean, granted, Nikov deserves a lot of credit for getting into Jordan's base. It did delay Jordan, but still, mm -hmm. Jordan's got to be like, man, I should have been up faster. I should have applied pressure. And maybe it was the distance that really uh, made him think twice about that. Leary does not have ballistics yet. Jordan does have ballistics, but Leary can probably out micro that. He has to be worried, though, about the light cav from Tato. Tato doing a good job to support Doubt here. Doubt is going to push in from this side. Leary probably needs another castle, and he's working on it right now. But MBL is coming over to the left side, and MBL has that second castle in the middle. MBL's resource is also looking pretty good. He could be up to imp soon. Mm -hmm. MBL really needs to research Bodkin Arrow at this point. I guess you could research it after you're on the way to imp if you really want to be greedy, but it would really he's help. Gonna, he's going to catch all these crossbows from Jordan out here, and MBL has, obviously, the two armor upgrades for free. Also has ballistics, mm -hmm. so Jordan's going to lose some units. He's splitting around this. The camel's coming from the other side. MBL needs to be a little bit careful here. Maybe back up to the pond and sit in the choke point. Oh, Doubt's been caught out, though, because Tato went to help Jordan, and this is the problem. When you're behind, you've got to take some risks, and we knew the crossbows had a time window. We knew that window had closed long ago, Dave, and Doubt behind an eco compared to Leary, and now well behind in military. And now it's AM's turn to push GL, and it's AM's turn to gather all of their military in one spot. Castle for Leary, second castle going up. Both flanks going unique units, both flanks with two castles, both flanks with the villager lead. MBL has clicked up to the Imperial Age. MBL's at 95 villagers right now. 95 vils with Koreans will get the third armor upgrade for free when he makes it to Imp. And, uh, you know, you could talk about a lot of things, like a, another forward castle. You could talk about upgrades, but honestly... I feel like we just see the GG when MBL's an imp. Like, I don't even think we see this game played out much longer. Like, there goes Jordan. But Jordan's got 17 crossbows, which is either going to be found or not enough against the wagons. This is absolute curb stomp. They can't engage against this. Mm -mm. They really can't. Nope. Like, they can hold it back from pushing in because there's no siege right now. But MBL now shifting over to the right side. I think he needs to be a little bit careful that he doesn't get collapsed upon, but actually, never mind, because Doubt's not even here. And Jordan and Tato are really going to struggle against this army at the front. What are the odds MBL forgot he doesn't have Bodkin at this point? I'm going to assume that he thinks he He's has He's going to figure it out when he gets to Imp and goes for Bracer. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We do have Jordan trying a tech switch. He knows this will be a problem. He's getting infantry upgrades, so he'll maybe try Halb. I don't think that's going to be the answer either. As all this pressure is over at Tato's base, they're all trying to keep Tato alive. And keep in mind, Nikov's now imping. And Nikov has been ahead of Tato pretty much all game. 
All right, Leary is shifting his plumes over. MBL sitting in that gap with the wagons. We still got the camels in front from Tato. He's tanking the fire. He's he's like tanking the fire in front of Jordan's crossbows. Is this the crossbows are doing anything to the wagons, <laughs> right? Right. I mean, they're they're trying here. And I guess Jordan's going to go like Bombard Cannon Halb on his side as MBL's got some wagons on him. And MBL will hit Imp. You're right, Dave. He's probably going to go to his blacksmith now, go to Click Bracer, say, oh, crap, yeah. I didn't have Bodkin. And uh, again, this has felt over for a while here. I mean, Aftermath's been ahead in Eco. It, they're now way ahead in military, but also just the type of military they're making is significantly stronger. Yep, and another seven war wagons show up right as Tato thinks he's cleared the other ones. MBL getting behind the crossbows is going to be able to clear that up. The plumed archers are wiping up the camels. More wagons on the way. MBL also went for a forward castle, getting conscription, but will probably f follow up with some trebuchet to try and push Jordan. And so many wagons over here. 22 wagons, 30 plumed archers, getting all the upgrades. Elite war wagon coming in. And Dow going up to Imp, Leary's up to Imp faster. Leary does have fewer villagers, but Leary has 50 military and Dow has five. Oh no, the wagon's in the back. Oh boy, so hard to deal with. Dow now switching into barracks. Okay. Yeah, I I think Dow maybe considering an eagle switch. He's like, well, I lost all my crossbows. I can't catch up in plume numbers, so let's try and go eagles, but the time's just not going to be there. Poor Tato is going to die to this. We saw wagons take out TCs many times in this tourney. Nikov's going to take his good old time and just go right to Imperial Camel. And Jordan's uh, trying for a ram push. MBL is trying to go for forward towers here. A little bit ambitious. He's putting towers around the map. Yeah. Uh, but the rams are going to deal with that. Treb is already out from Jordan, but the wagon number is behind. He's got a lot in the base from Tato, but he's also got a lot in defense here. MBL with 46 elite war wagons on the field right now. Does, of course, have Bracer. And Jordan doesn't even have capped Ram. What is happening? Dude, it does not feel like a final for Gamer Legion. Not even capped Ram. They're under so much pressure, surely. I mean, kudos to them for not resigning 10, 10 or 20 minutes ago. Because this has been bad for a while. But you need capped Ram here, Jordan. What's going on, man? Leary with 59 plumed archers, 47 war wagons. <laughs> the light cavalry spam is coming from Nikov, and he's getting heavy camel. Imp camel will follow. MBL's found just the perfect place to sit with his war wagons there. I like how Doubt was like, here, I'm going to trap him. And MBL's like, hey, thanks. This is a really good spot. <laughs> yeah, and then and the, the GG comes called. in. Yeah. That was a stomp, dude. That yeah, was that was a stomp. That was. As a neutral, of course, we casters always are. That was just disappointing. Like, no mm. one shows up to a final to want to see a game like that. And, like, the the FC into, into castles are so risky in present-day meta because of some level of early aggression. And it didn't happen from Jordan due to a very late uptime. It didn't happen from Doubt at all uh, because he didn't have a barracks. Yep. Now... Let's talk about why that could maybe have worked more than we were expecting initially. I think the distance between the players was a big reason why Leary and MBL would have considered that. But at least force them into some house walls. At least force MBL into a tower on his palisade walls. He wasn't fully protected from any archers. Uh, we also should give credit to Nikov because Nikov getting into Jordan definitely <laughs> stopped Jordan from going to MBL. Look at the KD for MBL. <laughs> 93 to 10? What? You think War Wagons are okay? I think they're all right. Yeah. And then Jordan's KD, Doubt's KD, Tata's KD. That, that's a forgettable game for Gamer Legion. Definitely. Yeah. I like the... I, I think AM realized how far apart they were on sure. the flanks yeah. before GL did. Because GL was going for that early pressure. Doubt going for the ridiculous amount of arches and feudal considering his situation and then just the late uptimes like you mentioned from Jordan yeah. and him were just too late and then I don't know what happened to Tato early like why produce so many scouts and why do you have such a late castle age time consistently behind in villagers maybe there was some damage done that we didn't see no I think I, Tato's the only one where I think it's acceptable because he realized oh crap this is really bad after doubt took damage and the enemy didn't take any damage so but I'm just looking at the uptime. So we have we have Leary going up at 1140. 
Doubt up yep. at 1025. Doubt arrived off a 1025 feudal with archers at Leary's base at the time Leary was making his castle. So he, he had an opportunity to go instant range and apply some pressure, didn't do it. Then you have MBL, fast castle into wagons. 1404 feudal time, Jordan 1347 feudal time. So for Jordan, his issue was he's three minutes later than the opposing flank, like his, sorry, his teammate who's trying to go yeah. aggro. So the build orders were wrong. The timing was wrong. Everything was just not good there for Gamer Legion. You so. should... I don't think you should ever be later to the castle age, or at a similar time to the castle age as your Korean yeah, counterpart exactly. with Ethiopians. Like you should always be faster. Now I think his strategy was to go two range crossbow, uh, and and it was always a fast castle. But I have to disagree with that. But maybe you know if Nikov doesn't get in, maybe it's a different story there. That ties it up though, two two. And for uh, for Gamer Legion, they'll get to look at their home maps now, and they've got Heartland, and they've got Fortress. It's going to be Fortress. Nice. Well, it's Mirror across the board. Is it? Yep. All right, let's see. Do we have Vietnamese? Do we have Slavs again? No. Wow, we've got, well, we've got Slavs, we've got Vietnamese, and we do have Berbers, Dave. So good call out there. Well, uh, some guy in my chat called that out. So okay. good call out, guy in my chat. Joe123. Yeah. yeah, one, two, three. All right. Well, I'm loving the meta with Slavs. Uh, I'm catching up to speed here. And you're going to see players use their scouts to bring in their boars for maximum eco efficiency. We've got Vietnamese as I think the most important sieve with their archers. So I'm looking now. You've got Leary on the right flank, and he's up against Tato Berbers. So yeah, so we're going to have Vietnamese versus Berbers on either side. And while I love the Camel Archer, I really do think that the Ratan Archer would dominate that uh, Camel yeah. Archer later on. And Leary with Vietnamese is terrifying. Yep. Jordan played well with Vietnamese uh, yesterday, but I had some question marks a little bit. I, he was matching up against Licks. That was Vietnamese against Chinese. Against Berbers is going to be a little bit easier for him, for sure. Yeah. But Leary, I don't think I've ever had questions about him playing an Archer Civilization with decent eco upgrades. Or a decent economy behind it as well. Since this is Mirror, since they've all decided to go for the same sieves, remember it's hidden sieves, so they just had the same ideas, I'm going to be looking at build orders. Because mm -hmm. in the previous game, Gamer Legion had really bad build orders. So uh, what time are they going to click up? The Feudal Age, but then of course Castle Age. And if I recall, I think Aftermath was a little bit faster, a little more fine-tuned with their build orders yesterday against the Baguettes. All right, so with Berbers, are you going Camel Archer? Are you going Stable Unit? You do make Camel Archers because I think in low numbers for map control, Camel Archer starts off better than the Rattans. They have more HP. Yeah, yeah. I think they're a little faster, and they have more base attack. As the game progresses, though, that's where we need to look and see, uh, does MBL have more on stone? And does only, Tato have more on stone? If only there was an Imperial Genitor. <laughs> if only <laughs> yeah if only well i wonder how good like doesn't any archer unit just do nothing to rats and archers because rats and archers have 10 pierce yeah basically so i think you could even go skirms but or both, janitors both teams have access to imperial skirm so if he goes rat and archer how well do imperial skirm match up against rat and archer I still think rats and archers due to the firing speed. And then, of Maybe. course, you'll mix in a bomber cannon or two. And yep. then you'll have slavs going with bow yards. I still think Im Imp Skirm is just the losing move. At least here. Oh, in no. 1v1s, it's different. Tristan, it's happening again. What? Who? What? Look at Dote's base. The bird line. We get this from time to time. It's happening again, Tristan. <laughs> They're all, they're all in a line. There's so many birds. Oh, my God. Keep scrolling. There's so many birds. What? They've chosen the winner here. Whoa, dude, you were kidding. I saw the, I saw the <laughs> so line <many> extend. <laughs> oh, geez. Why does this happen? I don't know, but devs, can we please not fix this? Because I missed the corner bird. If you could bring that I bug like back. This. Yeah, yeah. They, I remember they fixed the corner bird bug, which we love for years. Leave this. This is cool. They're Especially migrating. on Fortress. We, we really have nothing else to talk about at this point. So. Mm-hmm. I always feel like it flies over the color yellow. Didn't it fly over Viper last time we saw that? Yeah, but it was... We've seen it multiple times. I don't okay. know if it's just over yellow or... It's actually... No, it feels like it's always in the same 
area of the map. Maybe. Like, slightly right of the center. You know what would be funny? So, what if the map scripters, when they want to make a new map or customize a map, they just copy and paste a bunch of code or whatever, and yeah. the bird bug is somewhere in there. It's like hard-coded in Yeah, the yeah, and, and they <laughs> just keep using the same lines. Yeah. yeah. Like, Sandy Peterson or whatever is just like, ha ha, they still haven't figured it out. <laughs> like, ensemble studios. I, I just find it so funny that that the bug where one bird gets caught in the corner was fixed. And yep. ever since then, we've had like 25 birds all showing up at the same spot. So they've come back so with G vengeance. GL late to the castle age once more. Um, we've got one of their players now, Tato, just clicking up with the Berbers. So AM a little bit faster than them. It doesn't matter all that much though, because Tato could be building up for extra TCs or whatnot. Let's take a look at his economy. Pay attention to if anyone buys stone here. If you look, they so you start with 150 stone on this map. And so players will normally mine the extra 50 stone so they can build two TCs like Tato's doing. Mm -hmm. um, but some players want to buy it. Like MBL is someone who might purchase it. I'm looking. Nah, he's also mining it. He's mining, yeah. So uh, there have been situations where you have players try and buy it. And then you get the better price if you buy first and it just becomes annoying. So this is fine. Looks like Leary and Nikov both Xing the wood line from Doubt. Hmm. They were scouting there, and they yeah. both Xed it. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to make archer units, which we know camel archers and uh, rats and archers will probably come out, you want to find an area where you can do damage, and that's not always a guarantee because of castle positions and towers on this map. I'm being told uh, it's not a bug. They are migrating to warmer climates. Oh, yes, thank you. Definitely looks like it's a lot warmer in one area than the other here on this Arabia map. <laughs> God, it's just so weird. I don't know. Well, we'll see if that Our continues. Immediate 2TC here from Nikov. We got one extra TC from Leary and 2TC immediately from MBL. And it seems like a trend. The only person not in Castle H yet is Tato. He's going to reach and he'll go for 2TCs as well. So... And Leary, once again, Nikov Xing that wood line. Hmm. Once again. So maybe he's saying produce some units. And we got Rat and Archers already on the way from Leary. Yep. And they're heading directly to that wood line. I think that with only Fletching, you're not going to be able to do damage there. But it will be annoying to Tato because that's his only lumber camp right now. There's the TC coming. From Tato, and Tato already has a camel archer out. No fletching for him. Oh, it's on the way. All right, fletching is there from Leary, and he heads right over to that side. Oh, MBL. But Tato's gonna have military there. He's fine. MBL getting hit by rats and archers. Keep in mind, players won't have loom. That's actually something I just remembered. The villagers could die pretty quickly, but no uh, fletching for Jordan. I actually really like no fletching. You're probably not going to kill that much. And uh-oh, Camel Archers from Tato caught out. He did research fletching. But you've got uh, solid Pierce Armor at the start here for the Ratens. The Camel Archers, just not a unit. We expect to have a lot of success here. So I'm, again, surprised we saw Berbers. I was really thinking they'd go for something else, but I guess it's better than some other civs Better out there. than the alternatives. It's like, it's not the best Civ in this thing, but considering the bands and the maps you might have to play, yeah. it's probably one of the best. And since both teams went for it, they both figured it out, right? Yeah, the uh, Lumber Camp having to be repositioned by Tato hurts. He's, look at his villagers, ran the whole way across his map. And Vietnamese should have the better economy as well because of the cheaper uh, eco upgrades. So I think Tato under more trouble than MBL is right now on the other side. So MBL outperforming Tato. Leary might be able to pick a villager from Doubt. No, Doubt immediately garrisons. Okay. Look how quick this old man is. Very nice. Bodkin now for Leary. So, I mean, he is showing up with some intent here with these Rattans. And he will lose one of these Rattan archers, though, to the scout and the, the units from Tato. Well played there to pick off the reinforcements. I like it. NBL only went for one camel archer, and now he's got a Mangonel out. So he's kind of like hmm. baiting the production here. He also converted a Rattan. Nice. So NBL kind of saving a little bit of resources. And now with the Mangonel, he can actually... Be a little bit annoying against Jordan. And Jordan actually made his market and blacksmith forward too. Which MBL could take out. MBL's gone for a ram. What, what is he? Is he thinking about killing the market blacksmith as part of Jordan's wall here? 
I mean, I, I was going to say Must earlier be. that's a really impressive little wall, but I'm not sure I agree with the Ram. It's MBL. Yeah, but I will say not making Camel Archers makes sense to me. You can maybe make them later, but don't make them right now. I don't think they're going to accomplish much. As Tato comes forward with his, and perfect timing on Nikov's TC. Nikov protects himself there. Might even get a kill if he's lucky. And unfortunately for him, he does not. But still, really like the, the play so far for Aftermath. MBL signaling now his little push. It's like, I kill all! <laughs> this is the most MBL push ever, Yeah, dude. against rat nurtures too, yeah, which this... are fast. They can snipe the monks. Yeah. Like, as soon as those monks are gone, your mangonel is just free. Well, what I like about this choice is... See, Jordan's had a better boom than Leary because he didn't get the blacksmith upgrades, which cost food and delay vill production. So you're kind of punishing the fact that Jordan hasn't gone for those upgrades, forcing him to do that, and now he's going after the very blacksmith where those upgrades are going to come in. This is like... This is a proper time to maybe say a 200 IQ move from MBL. Fletching will complete, but Bod Canera will have to be in a new building. And he's forcing Jordan to go for a siege workshop here. And usually it's the Vietnamese that should be expected to be pushing the Berbers yep. in early Imperial Age. Yep. But if Jordan has to invest in defense, maybe NBL will have a decent forward position here. Oh, if he goes... And it'll buy him some time. Yeah, if he goes forward castle fast imp into Trebs, that is exactly what his team needs him to do. Because mm -hmm. his team needs him to just hold off the Vietnamese. Whereas on the other side, I mean, as we see Ratens for Leary, miss a couple shots... He's really he's harassing Tato. Villagers. Yeah, he's been moving villagers nonstop on and off the wood lines. Look at Leary sitting on the wood line in the north. Also has Rattans on the wood line in the south. Yeah. I'm loving this play for AM. And also for comparing the pockets, Nikov is a bit ahead of doubt right now, both in eco upgrades and in villagers. So Nikov forced to insane. make another blacksmith and market too. Here come some boyars from Dal to help at Tato's wood line. And I think Leary will still be kind of happy with this situation because now he can tell Nikov, yo, just boom, dude. Just boom. Doubt spending resources before Imp. Of course, MBL takes out the Maganel from Jordan. Of course. Of course. And he takes down a villager. Jordan at 66 villagers. MBL over here at 54. He's stalled out. And MBL's going up. Wow, dude. This is so good. This is so smart from AM. He's going for a forward castle, too. Look at his stone count. This is incredible. I mean, listen, MBL, he does this wacky stuff from time to time. But this is genuinely one of the most perfect things, one of the best things he could have done. Opening Siege Monk at going forward is possibly going to allow uh, Nikov the opportunity to just kill the Vietnamese player in early imp. I love this. This is so impressive. And to be honest, if I was going to expect this from any team, I would have oh, expected it a bit more from oh. Gamer Legion. Yeah, MBL, that castle with the Mangano coming out. Here from Jordan. If Jordan sees the villagers going to build, he can pop it out. Okay, that time period has passed. MBL should be able to de defend this foundation. It's going to be ranging this side. Ooh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, MBL. I, I think he could have done with the castle more towards the middle here. This is super yeah. ambitious. Yeah, he still has a minute and 30 until he's an imp. Yeah. Um, he's gone for a Siege Workshop forward, so he can make more Mangonels here to defend this. But now Jordan with two Mangonels. MBL losing two villagers oh. immediately. If Jordan MBL denies still this. still without Loom, by the way. No way he doesn't have Loom. No, MBL. No. This is like... Do you remember when he, like, was laming Viper, and then he blocked Viper's lame at the same time, and it was amazing, and then he completely lacked a follow-up? MBL. Okay, he's going to complete it. Tato losing Vils to Leary. And now Tato is going forward with his Camel Archers. MBL still no loom, but he gets the castle up. He kills a couple of villagers from Jordan. Jordan up to the Imperial Age. He's going to be two and a half minutes later, though. Yeah. So he could lose one of the... He probably will lose one of these castles. And and if Jordan is making Trebs, he can't make Ratans. So I think this is now Nikov and Leary's time. And Leary going forward with the castle now. Mm -hmm. Who's Leary is up way to ahead Imperial of Tato. Age. And he could get a great castle right forward there. Cut off some of the farms, the wood line. Cut off that gold as well. Oh boy, this is looking pretty good for AM. There is camel archers in the back that Leary and Nikov need to be careful of. Yeah, crazy house wall here for Nikov. He must have heard about it. 
Boyars and Camel Archers coming forward against uh, Leary here. Oh man, another castle for Aftermath that maybe they should have waited for. Oh, but that's a lot of Rattans. It should be fine. Yeah, this will be completely fine. Yeah, it's just such a sick unit, man. It's so sick. Oh my goodness. Camel Archers Even can't do anything. Two. Yep. Even with plus two armor on the Boyars, they just die. MBL is just sacrificing himself for his team right now. And he, he knows, or he maybe feels like, that Doubt and Tata will die on the other side. Love the work from Tata with the Camel Archers, but I mentioned earlier in the day about Nikov's damage control. Look at that little save on the left of his base. And he's going to go in after those Camel Archers. The Tato doesn't have full upgrades on, of course. I think the key here is going to be actually Doubt. Because Doubt's going to be in Imperial Age before Leary. Mm -hmm. And he has a castle nearby. And he's going for Trebs right away. So Leary's forward castle might actually die yeah. to Doubt and not the Tato. So really great stuff there from the Lord. I think a lot of this also comes down to where does Nikov go, right? Because he's going to be tempted as he's chasing down Camel Archers now. Good distraction from Tato. He's going to be tempted to run over towards Jordan. He's going to be tempted to run over towards Leary. He's got to pick the proper the side. Walls from MBL. Walls from MBL around the Trebs are so smart here. Mm -hmm. Doesn't want any Rams coming. And there's Rams queued up there from Jordan. Also doesn't want any Boyars. And he can simply wall behind them to save yep. them. He's going to take out this castle that Jordan made. Going to be able to take out the market, the farms, the siege workshop, the town center over here. Dave, I liked the approach from MBL on the other side. It's super low eco, but I still love it. I'm just not sure when rats and archers are supposed to kill everything if you want to build the castle leary has gone for. It's below a hill where Doubt's already standing. Why not place a more defensive castle, kind of where he's placing his castle now, and just work on keeping your castles up so you can make more rats and archers? I think I liked the castle initially. I just think Doubt counterplayed it so well. Yeah, With that's the true. forward castles here, right? Like... The castle felt so good against Tato, but when your pocket from the other team is coming forward and has Trebs and is an Imperial Age before you mm -hmm. with a better economy, it's going to look really bad. And Doubt has 130 villagers. Nikov is at 150. Yep. He did this Nikov yesterday. Nikov going for Elite Boyar now. Nikov went for this type of a boom yesterday. He'll have Elite Boyar any second. Doubt. And he, he's he does have that as MBL well. Against Jordan. Elite I... Boyar over here against Jordan. Jordan needs some help there, but Doubt is having to save Tato. We should mention, though, that Tato has a pretty big vill lead compared to MBL's vill count, and if MBL's forward push doesn't work out, if he doesn't take out a couple more castles, I think he'll be disappointed with the results. It's just how much damage can they do to Jordan here is my mm -hmm. question. MBL's got Trebs. He's got three Trebs here. Nikov has Boyars queued up. Nikov has some Boyars over there, and MBL now going for Onager. All right. Yeah, Onager, I mean, he's playing a 1v1 right now. That, that's the way he sees it. But I don't like Onager, actually, because I'd much prefer to see Bomber Cannon. If he would have researched chemistry, he could be making Bomber Cannons. That's what Jordan's going to have from his Siege Workshop in a moment. And Jordan can actually snipe Trebs from behind his walls. We'll see if Nikov can get through there. Okay, Nikov, you got to stop making vills at this point, buddy. You've got too much. Yeah. 161, 161 vills is a bit excessive. Oh, he just deleted a bunch. Okay, yeah. He just deleted a bunch. Look at Tato's Camel Archer number two. It's climbing. He's got 25. Mm -hmm. Camel Archer's behind Boyars feel pretty good. Ratten Archer's behind Boyars feel, feel pretty good. It's just who can make more of an impact over here on Jordan MBL's side? So also, far, MBL hasn't been hit. Jordan's been harassed. Jordan seems to be making castles as he loses them, which is a big positive for him. Look at MBL mm -hmm. split his onagers away, and he oh, takes out no, castle number boyars. two. There's so many boyars coming. There's 25 boyars coming, and look at MBL's army. Only onagers and trebs. Doubt okay. needs to be careful not to get attack grounded here, and he's split. Yeah, he's, he's, no, he's just splitting off like five boyars to go over there. The thing is, though, the second MBL sees this, there should be some type of a move from Nikov and from Leary, because mm -hmm. they're waiting. They're expecting Doubt to still be there. The problem Ooh. is they don't have Siege, and great attack rounds from MBL! And Doubt's going to need more Boyars here. Doubt actually is seeing a castle from Nikov in the middle, and he's going to go deny that. So that's why he split off. Okay, and, and Nikov walling it up. But again, there's all this army for Nikov and Leary with no Siege. They should be pushing castles right now. They're not doing it. And look at Jordan. Jordan sniping some of these Trebs here, MBL. Will keep them alive, but he's going to maybe have to think past just Siege and Trebuchets. Both teams already getting the trade set up. Very annoying cliffs. 
at the edge of the map there for aftermath in the left corner. Yep, yep. there's a Nikov lot of actually, He actually managed to wall his villagers in in the middle, but Trebs are there from doubt. The Trebs are going to be taken out by the Boyars from Nikov. That's a good snipe. And Leary moving over now with a bunch of Rattans and some Trebs to try and deal with that. Leary also tried to wall in Tato on the other side, which didn't immediately work, but I think he can send villagers now and maybe get that complete. Look at the jockeying for position right now. Look at MBL's villager count. He's trying to mix in camel archers, Dave. So he kind of feels like he's done his job and now he needs something against the Boyars. So he's catching up. And we've got Nikov with the prime position here. 62 Boyars at the moment. Doubt's yep. losing castles and Doubt's got 46. Jordan though with elite rats and archers and a solid number, even though he lost those castles. So good job from him. And Tato here with Camel Archers, so it's kind of a 2v3 right now for Aftermath. They definitely need MBL's Camel Archers soon. Tato just, it feels like he can't really get involved yet. He's oh kind God, of moving around like with that. these Camel Archers. He comes in, Rattans are there. Lots of Boyars here from Nikov. Jordan is also over here, but Jordan has to be careful about MBL. He's actually doing mm -hmm. a good job defending right now with Bombard Cannons. MBL trying to snipe those. MBL just got Elite Camel Archer. MBL still in the middle of nowhere with these onagers. That's the confidence he has in his attack rounds. Look at these rats and archers. It, it, you, you can't touch this. <laughs> yeah. This is why MBL, I know he's starting to lose a little bit of ground, but this is why MBL sought out those castles. Because he knew how it would go if he didn't play it in another way. Okay, and I'm loving how Leary and Nikov are coordinating here. Look at the, the Trebs being saved there by Leary. This is an amazing engagement, and I think he should just send the Trebs in right for that castle now. Hatu just seems so confused right now. Yeah. Like, where do I go? What do I do? His camels are running back and forth. He's barely got any value from them. He's adding trade, but army not really able to connect. And now all three of them pushing forward. MBL is the only player not involved in this fight, but MBL is pushing in from the other side. So Jordan's got to be really careful here. Yeah, and I, I love it. If MBL can get a big shot while Jordan is distracted, MBL could make a beeline for the trade. You know the it's trade's going to be in that corner. There's more Rat and Archers here. There's 29 from Jordan, and there's 62 from Leary. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're able to win this fight 3v2. I think what's so tough, though, is that Jordan needs to protect himself and be in the middle. So look at yeah. MBL. He's like, oh, you've got Bombard Cannons? Cool. I know I can't kill your Rats and Archers. So he'll take out the Bombard Cannons and then just back right up. Yeah, and once they're gone, my Onagers can come in. But he's misclicked the wall! MBL losing a lot of Camel Archers there. Oh, that's tragic. Tried to click out, and he attacked the wall. The funniest thing is watching Rats and Archers versus Rats and Archers because... They don't I, die. <laughs> I think it's I think it's one damage a hit. <laughs> so if you ever just want to have a funny little screensaver or something, just get a bunch of Rattens patrolling into Rattens. Oh, man. Well, Dave, um, this is looking amazing for Aftermath, and I think it's just mm -hmm. the position. They've got Jordan on the ropes, even though his population's high. They've got Dow repairing castles, and... It, they're you hoping that numbers can matter here. Tato still has a lot of camel archers. Do you think there's an opportunity here for MBL to make a switch at some point to cavalry? I, just to get in there and raid? I think when the trade's set up, because he's invested a lot of gold right now. When the trade is set up and both teams are starting to trade, then you can definitely do that. Oh gosh, Tato's camel archers found themselves in front of this battle as the castle went down. Leary is not giving Doubt any time. He's not allowing these guys to wait it out mm -hmm. any longer. Five Bombard Cannons with the two Trebs, and they need to fight this right now. They need to fight this. I just don't know if they can win it. And Jordan, Jordan's numbers are falling, so Jordan's not going to be part of this fight for very much longer. As the Camel Archers go in and try and snipe the Bombard Cannons, Leary can get some attack rounds, though. Leary also taking out Camel Archer numbers. So many boy are there. For Nikov and Jordan can't afford to send any more forces because Ebiel is nuking him with onagers and trebs and camel archers of his own. Jordan is an incredible player, but there's no way that he can Too fight against this on both yeah. sides. There's no way. There's no way. Yeah. And he doesn't have the numbers. It's still 60 rats and archers for Leary. And I think we are very close from seeing Aftermath win this game. And I this is the most impressive game of the weekend for me because yeah. there's so much confusion on one side. And it's like Aftermath knew exactly what to do. And GL been fighting 3v2 in the middle here because Jordan has been over there helping them. But AM doesn't really care about that because Leary's numbers are so much more significant. Yep. Rattans are dictating every single fight and MBL is keeping the 
uh, Vietnamese player busy, and he's denying a castle in a trade, I think. Wow. He's going to be into there. Look at Jordan. You can tell he's panicked. That lumber camp is 15 tiles away from the wood line. Yeah. They... Jordan is all over the place right now. And even if he, he gets this castle up, Dave, he still has to be there. He can't send rats and archers on the other side. These camel archers just feel useless. And now Delt has lost two or three castles over the last few moments. So he can't actually support the way Nikov can with the Boyars. And the GG's GG. called. Wow. Honestly, Dave, this was a ridiculous game. I really wonder, and I'm going to have to watch back on some VODs and whatnot, but I really wonder whose idea it was to play, like, to tell MBL to do that, or if MBL said it himself, because, like... I think he probably said it himself. I would think he... the same. I would think that's an MBL yeah. idea, and that was just so incredibly strong. Yep. I, I, I can't help but look at that and just think, genius. Because he, it's a risk, right? He was like 30 vils behind Tato on the other side. This is a boom map. You don't normally want to do that. But they recognize to take out those castles, split the Vietnamese focus. Also, full credit to Nikov and Leary because they were insane I can't, on the yeah, other I side. I can't really pick an MVP there. I think Doubt played that quite well for GL. He did. I think Tato was just, Tato seemed confused. And that's not usually a word that I say for Tato, but the yeah. entire game. Pulling away from the wood lines, trying to find a good engagement with the camel archers, and then an imp. He's just running back and forth, not really mm -hmm. doing anything with them. Didn't commit to a single fight. And uh, Doubt helped them out by taking out the forward castle from Leary, but they were never able to push through the past that middle point. Jordan didn't have a bad game. Nope. Jordan didn't have a bad game. He was just up against a great and confusing strategy. Mm -hmm. Like, the ramming down of the blacksmith making some sense? Like, when does that happen on Regicide Fortress? <laughs> it never happens. Blacksmith happened. and market, dude. Blacksmith yeah. And going forward, castle with no loom. <laughs> with no loom. And that's the thing about it. It's like, if Jordan would have realized... Under a siege workshop. You know like, it's there. <laughs> if that castle gets denied, the game's over right there. Yeah. Because then Jordan can send everything over here. So, uh, Gamer Legion, you know, two games where I think they've got outplayed a little bit, but definitely mm -hmm. out-strategized. And they're going to have to really regroup here. Aftermath have now two chances. Next game, and if there's a game seven, to win this final. All right, well, we're, we're in. And uh, we've answered a lot of questions here on what civilizations we'd see. MBL in a position that he was in yesterday with Saracens. He's Japanese. You've got Leary playing Lithuanians as the pocket. And then Nikov is playing as the Malay. You have to think that Nikov's performance yesterday in game seven... The all-important Game 7 in the semi has led mm -hmm. to him picking Malay here again. Uh, Jordan up against him has gone for Vikings, a pick we've seen time and time again. Then Tato playing Lithuanians. And then Doubt as the Japanese. So the only differences in civs is going to be on the left side. What do you like better, Malay or Vikings here? Well, you told me that Vikings is good on a potential Game 7. So with that in mind, I really like Malay, but I don't think there's that big of a difference That's with how these civs are going to play out. Based on the games that I saw, yeah, Men at Arms Civilization seemed good there, mm -hmm. but Malay could also be really good there too. So we'll see what strategies they bring for that. Obviously, GL has to be worried about winning this game first, and yeah, Vikings sure. will have the eco advantage having Wheelbarrow and Handcart for free, but Malay will save a, a few villagers worth of time going up to the next stage, so... And also, Jordan's running dangerously close to Nikov's TC here. Nikov might be able to get the scout from Jordan. This is potentially no. reworthy, by the way. I don't think they called yep. the re yet. This is potentially reworthy. You're down a game. You want everything to go right. And I was just about to touch on the fact that Malay get fires. So you could always have Nikov dock comfortably, and Vikings can't. Because Vikings can't compete with even one dock fires. So we'll see if they want to call a restart. You get one per best of seven before four minutes. I get maybe he'll wait to see if Nikov's gonna lose his scout following, but Nikov's not gonna chase. And no restart. Okay. No restart yet. Maybe they're waiting for the 401. Yeah. <laughs> Some old 2015 drama right there. <laughs> Team Norway. Do you remember that? I do remember that. And that's oh, not the only God. time that's happened. People will no. press enter a second too late, and then the rules say before four minutes. Also, it looks like MBL and Doubt fought with their scouts because both those scouts are really weak right now. Yep. Yeah, they were both looking at the uh, dock positions from each other, and MBL is going to get his dock up a little bit before Doubt mm -hmm. with the Japanese. You know, 
You've got to think now as, 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 oh my god, Tato almost lost a villager. MBL wins the scout war. This is not good for doubt at all. Oh my god, this is so, this how is bad. You, how do you take that fight there? You can't. After he gets the first hit, you can't lose your scout like that. Now you're going to be completely oblivious as to what's going on. MBL was two hits from going down. Doubt took the fight, and then they didn't call a re. And yep. now here's the deal. Your scouts, we, I, I don't understand them not calling a restart. Because Jordan just wanted to dock, Dave. But he now yep. knows that Nikov's got a full HP scout, and he does not. So his exactly. villager Nikov would be in jeopardy. Was sitting there. Yeah. The foundation was canceled, and now Jordan can't dock. And it changes your strategy completely. Jordan has to go for a mill now. If you have a re in the back pocket, you've got to call it there, Gamer Legion. And obviously, it's too late now. But good early moments for Aftermath with all the tiny things. And for the average player who's watching, you could think about that and say, does it really matter? But it won't for you. It will for them. I think doubt being blind against MBL is going to be the worst feeling ever. <laughs> yeah, because and there's so much space to play back here on this yeah. hill and stuff. Yeah. Like if MBL goes into archers after the water pressure or if MBL just now knowing that there's no scout from doubt mm -hmm. goes into archers, it could be a nightmare for him. So this is what I'd like to see from Aftermath. I'd like to see Leary do exactly what we saw from him yesterday. And I'd like to see him go fast first. up to dock galley opening. Yep. And then I'd like MBL to just say, okay, Leary, you've got it. Because you protect me. Yeah, yeah. My, your fishing ships are strong, so don't make anything on water. Go man an arm opening here or go fast archers against doubt. And then if you're Nikov, I think you could probably justify doing nothing as well on water. But you're a little closer to where Tato may be, so maybe you want to add a fire or two. Tato actually scouting MBL's water, and MBL now signaling that the scout is coming from him, so Leary's going to be aware. And he's going to be protecting his villagers in the middle here. On the other side, I think Nikov might be able to clear up Jordan's scout here. Nikov's going to be in Feudal Age first. That could be nice as well. I think it's going to be a little too late here for Nikov. Good cautious play from him. He doesn't know exactly where the TC is. And he's going to wait till he gets more vision and speed on the scout to see what Jordan is up to. Yeah, and Leary clears up the scout from Tato. So it's going to be a lot of inf information loss mm -hmm. here as from the GL team as MBL is now signaling the second dock from Doubt, indicating that Doubt is indeed going to go into water pressure. MBL will be a little bit earlier from him, but MBL has done it. This is, I think this is all because Doubt lost the scout. MBL is gone for a barracks and now he's going for an archer range, likely when he hits Feudal H. Nikov was faster to Feudal, has fishing ships for Eco, of course. He delayed the range a little bit there. He didn't have the wood, but he knows that's exactly what Jordan's going for. And MBL, great communication. You can already see with the signals. Mm -hmm. He's like, hey, like this is the situation. These are where all the docks are located. So Leary knows. And Leary's got a job to do here. And he's opening archer fire range. galleys. Double archer range from MBL. Doubt can be in a world of hurt if he just is going fire galleys. I, I, I don't like this strategy. Like, yes, you might be able to clear up I guess the idea is you clear up Leary and MBL's fish and Nikov's fish, and then you have Tato mm -hmm. fish boom, but Doubt's going to need to think about a tower here and maybe even skirmishers instead of archers. He's going for a range, so it's actually decent build here from Doubt as he has two fire galleys already out, and Leary has not yet hit him on the fish. MBL's going to have to run away with his, and MBL will lose his food income before the archers are in place. Doubt has to be suspecting that the archers are coming. That's why he went for the archer range. Mm -hmm. Should probably drop a tower somewhere around his other wood line or the stone, potentially. But MBL could also ignore this and go to yellow or go to Tato with the archers, too. I'm not sure what I feel about the fire galley opening here from Leary. I really like galleys. Uh, if Tato can micro well enough, I think this could be a, a water win for GL. Also, as MBL always oh, shows up with the two archers... Doubt won't, not only will he lose Vils, but he won't ever get Fletching because the blacksmith's denied. Oh, God. And this is what happens when you go double dock, right? So they're winning water, so that's the trade-off. If they can win water and Doubt starts to fall behind on land, then it could even out and Tata will have a lead. Yeah, and Doubt does not have the armor yet for his archers or Fletching mm -mm. for that matter. So he's going to try and build another blacksmith further back delaying that even more we've got oh. nikov on the gold from tato 
Neek off there with archers, and he's gonna be able to kill one villager. But look at the wall offs from Tato here. But he can't he hit the archers. The army. He can't hit the archers, and <laughs> it's he's just so gonna bad. Lose villagers. He just assisted Nikov here, because Nikov's killed two. This would have never happened otherwise. It could be three as well. Tato, no, he's gonna lose three. And if oh, I'm MBL, God. I mean, Doubt doesn't have his upgrades yet. You could stay at Doubt's base, but why not go right to Tato? Tato's I think you worried wanna, on water right now. Yeah, I think you want to clear up these skirmishers before they get the armor on them, actually. Yeah, but maybe. Now the armor is coming in, Fletching's in, so Emil is going to back off. But he's still sending archers in from the other side. He's got two range production. He's now signaling Doubt's fire galleys. He's actually got two demos and a fire galley coming out. So I love it. MBL might be able to take over his portion of the water. Leary is still holding in the middle. Tato was very distracted, and all of his galleys are super wounded. All it takes is... One more distraction at Tato's base, and Leary can clear up those galleys very easily, and Leary's going over to Doubtstock now. Yeah, I'm liking this from Leary. I, I like the coordination. Also, the communication, because Jordan ran by Nikov knowing he needed to do damage, and I uh, don't think there were many losses there for Leary. Good defense from Doubt. Just killed four archers in exchange for no units lost. Uh -oh. The scout will come over, though, uh -oh. from MBL, uh -oh. and MBL added that scout additionally to his starting one, and he's shown up at... The berries now, that's a good switch from MBL to add scouts. He knew Doubt was full in on skirms. Two more villagers going down. MBL is destroying this side, and Doubt is now losing his fish as Tato comes over to defend. In the last three games, AM has won every single little 1v1, right? Like, MBL won the 1v1 against Jordan in the previous game, which led to things working out well. And now he's turned this into a 1v1 against Doubt. And he's doing well here. This is so good from MBL. Who I think oh, has played God. way better today in the finals than he did in the semis. Yeah, and he played pretty good in the semis, honestly. Yeah, he did. He's just playing like a beast here. And I, I struggle to see what the what the reward is for everything that's gone down. Tato has zero fish, right? Doubt has zero fish. So like everyone's got no fishing ship. Tato's losing he... his galleys now. He's kind of oh, trapped in between boy. the fire galleys here from Leary. Leary can snipe one if he notices. Yeah, another one goes down. Tato losing tons of HP. And uh, Nikov's still fishing, by the way, with two fishing ships for what it's worth. He's not fully walled to the left. Oh, boy. I hope that doesn't and end Doubt. up being an issue for him. Doubt just lost two more vills yeah, he's, on he's, the wood line. He's so dead, dude. Oh, my goodness. MBL is just all over him. He lost... Three arches in a row to that lion and to the force from Doubt, but he's got more reinforcements coming. Why no tower for Doubt? Like, anywhere. Oh, he did. Excuse me, I'm he sorry. He did on the wood line. He did, yeah, okay. He did on the wood line. Yeah, Leary feels... trying to trap in the galleys again. That's a with great micro, you have to say, but there's some weak ones in here, and oh boy. This could be a quick one. Jordan has clicked up to the next age. But Doubt is taking more losses on his gold. He can't afford a tower there. And now I'd expect Leary to queue up some fishing ships. MBL is 12 villagers ahead of Doubt. Yep. And it's it's yeah, because it's... Doubt went for water. Right? Like, MBL's still got a fishing ship, actually. <laughs> like, MBL's <laughs> got fish somehow. I've never seen someone go forward... In, in that type of a position, I've never seen someone go to dock and really do too well on this map yep. because that archer pressure just snowballs so quick on you. Now we'll have to get some help from his teammates, and I think Jordan's that teammate. I don't know if you caught it, Dave, but the weak units in Jordan's army is from a demo from Nikov. And Jordan split away from that. Nikov's going to have a similar uptime with uh -oh. a similar army count. I wonder Nikov. if Doubt signals this for Tato because he's lost track of MBL's army and Tato is running from the wood line now. Yep. Tato knows that it's incoming. Tato is on the way to the castle age. Tato's still in water, the scouts. though. Like, I really kept thinking that the fires would dominate Tato, but I guess because Tato's galley micro has been on point and uh, I don't know, maybe a, fact, a couple other factors. Leary hasn't been able to take the water away from him yet. MBL is not yet up. MBL is still waiting for the resources. Doubt, of course, he's <laughs> trying for to sling. just defend, <laughs> defend his uh, his friend. And 
You know, that's that's not going to work that well. But MBL has actually added more fishing ships behind this. So that's actually quite nice. Leary, 40 seconds away from Castle H, looking to upgrade his ships when he gets there. And he's trying to converge once again on Tato's Navy. It looks like he got a big demo in on the galleys. And man, oh, he collapses boy. from every direction here. And Tato cannot afford or he couldn't afford at the time to click his upgrades. So now Tato will have three units on water. He'll probably have a little bit more, but it brings it closer to water victory for AM as MBL is looping right back to Doubt. This is not at all what Doubt's expecting. There he goes for a TC now. Second TC because he knows the army from Jordan is incoming. Nikov has been tracking that army. Jordan's got a lot of skirmishers there. Yeah, Remember, seriously. Jordan has wheelbarrow handcart for free with Vikings. So his economy is going to be looking pretty good. MBL's now up. They can win this through Jordan right now. Like, that's mm -hmm. no joke because Leary can't afford to make knights, which means the skirm opening for Jordan, you can see it now, can hold off all those crossbows. And Tato hasn't given up on water yet, and the military counts are still very close here, Dave. So there always could be swings, but still, I, I like look back at doubt. And I just yeah, realized Doubt, how bad it is. Doubt's super struggling. Doubt's basically out of the game. I like this from MBL and Nikov, though. They both sent a demo raft in mm -hmm. to help Leary. And that really wounded the fires early. Tato now comes in with a demo. <sighs> he oh, gets a great wow. demo there. There's a demo incoming, though, from Leary. Meanwhile, on the land, Nikov has lost a lot of his military against the skirmishers. Jordan split them up. He's harassing Leary with the crossbows, and he's dealing with the crossbows from Nikov with his skirms. Look at Jordan. He's killing more at Leary's base. Two more villagers yep. bite the dust. And Leary, you don't know No reaction. This? He's on water, Leary. Dave. Leary. He's on water. What is happening right now? So, like, Doubt is dead, right? But the other two players are a little shaky for Aftermath. And Can Leary. Can TC get denied? No Jordan's way. splitting up his, his crossbows here. He's trying to snipe different villagers. TC will go up, but oh my god, Leary's down to 30 vils now. Well, now Leary's dead, right? He, he hasn't had a fish boom. Now you've got Tato at 43 eco versus 30, adding three TCs. And honestly, okay. MBL, you need to go right to, to Tato right That's now. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's yeah. super satisfying to keep killing Doubt. <laughs> to yeah, keep, sure. Like, <laughs> keep stomping him down whenever he tries to get back up. But you got to do damage to Tato. Like, imagine he was around here and Tato's trying to place these foundations. I agree. Could be really rough for him. Also, I want to talk about the recovery from Nikov here. 57 villagers. He's ahead. He's three TCs. He hasn't been able to find all the armies from Jordan, though. And if Jordan... Oh, boy. Emil's making a tower because he expects something might come in. But those crossbows are on their way, Dave. And they could still kill... Oh, Jesus. Emil's making a TC. I think Game He's... Religion could actually come back here. This is so close. Emil does have that tower there. So that's going to help. But the crossbows from Jordan do have ballistics and MBL could be in for a world of hurt here as he continues to idle the farm eco from doubt out clicks up to the castle age and uh MBL or both Leary and Nikov signal that before MBL notices <laughs> I think MBL he garrisoned pretty early there but the thing is there's no army to deal with that so Nikov's got to send crossbows all the way across the map and scorpions as they're rolling through Leary's base Meanwhile, Jordan has skirms that are distracting and distracting in Nikov's base. And I think Jordan's going to go fast imp here. He's going to go rams right now to go kill Nikov. Again, very doable, I feel, right now for Gamer Legion. Mm -hmm. And MBL even Xing the path that Jordan is going to take. It's like he knows. Mm -hmm. It's like this way, this way, this way. You're going to have to cover that off. Nikov was still trying to clear up the skirmishers in the back. Jordan has done such a great job to keep his team in the game here. MBL actually going for a forward siege. I like that. Doubt. I think Doubt will actually be in a position to defend himself, though. He's going to clear up MBL's crossbows in the back of his base. His crossbows were never really able to make it over. Well, maybe and I should going soon. imp. Jordan is going imp. Imp with capped ram, and I think Nikov could just completely die if he doesn't have siege. What a play from Jordan here. I mean... You think back to the Fortress game, he got outplayed, right? Uh, you think back to the Bedouins game, and I think that it, he he played not good. But here, is... he's his team needed him, and he's coming in clutch and allowing Tato to boom up a bit. There's a transport ship from Leary. What? In the queue. 
But for what? I like... too am wondering that. <laughs> <laughs> is he gonna put a monk in a transport ship or something? I, I don't understand. Wait, did MBL actually win that fight against Stout with the with the crossbows? You said we're gonna get cleared up. Well, I think he did. He he did. I unfortunately Doubt just didn't really micro them. MBL realized, but Jordan or Tato, sorry, has some help there. I love on this map how people are able to keep their armies alive in the back. Jordan with this big ball. Still around, and he'll take out that scorpion if he wants to. Mm -hmm. I love how he has hidden the ram play, Dave. Yes, Nikov will click up soon, and yes, he advances faster, but capped ram is going to take out all the TCs in production on the front. Ooh, MBL even going for a knight here. He saw the siege from Doubt. Mm -hmm. He's added in a knight to take care of that mangonel. He's going to pull the mangonel out of position, and now he's sending a mangonel and some crossbows. Over towards Tato's base once again, but Tato is 4 TC, and Tato didn't get nuke like Leary got nuke, so he's ahead in villagers. Nikov's now up to the next stage. Jordan is about to hit Imperial Age. He doesn't have any stone, True. so he can't go for a forward castle, which would really help him out here. And Vikings don't have access to Bombard Cannon, so if Nikov plays this correctly, he can defend against the Ram push for yeah. sure. Well, the thing is, you're normally expecting just the upgrades. So Nikov's yeah. thinking, I need skirm numbers and I need arb numbers. There's 16 military for Nikov. There is 63 military for Jordan, including a group that will surely hit Leary's eco or MBL's eco <laughs> in the back. <laughs> Leary's sending a monk w for one relic. I don't even know where it is right ship. now. It's in the transfer ship. It's landing inside of Tato's base. <laughs> okay. I, I mean, I see what he's trying to go for here. But Leary and Tato are both kind of in, well, we'll boom up and see mode as they're at 80 vils but not contributing with military. And here's the capped ram. Yes, it's one TC eco from Jordan. Yes, he doesn't have that many villagers. But Nikov needs to Vikings. start making a bunch of military buildings right now. It's Vikings. His eco has been incredibly efficient. Also, he's on Leary. He's taking a fight against Nikov there too. And this army can always hit other areas of Leary's eco. There's nothing Leary can do about it. Doubt needs to hold, man. He needs to defend. And honestly, yep. he's done quite well to not die even more than he has. As you now see Leary still defending on water. But look at Tato. Tato sniping Nikov's fish. This is a smart move from Tato. If Jordan can continue this push, Gamer Legion could maybe take themselves to a game seven. And Nikov going Onager. Nikov is researching Onager right now, but he's going to have to wait. He loses that. He's going to lose a lot of villagers over there. Yep. Struggling with his army to defend. We've got no land military here from Leary as he's at 86 villagers. Jordan has been carrying this game for Gamer Legion and I think he's going to carry it to the point where Tato can get back and involved on land. And that's the thing. And, and like MBL isn't doing anything to anyone else and Doubt's like, it's okay. <laughs> like it, if, As long as MBL isn't an imp, I'm okay. And MBL hasn't been an imp. He's gone for so many aggressive options to kill Doubt. I think Nikov's... Onager research is in. Okay, for that's Nikov. that's a big one. That's really big. He's gonna lose villagers, Dave, but he still is thirty villagers ahead. He's gonna have enough for a castle soon too. Now, if you're Jordan, you've got to either go for your own Onager, which you usually can't afford, this... or you need to avoid it all and just micro it. This was not good from Jordan. He had his army split. The classic like momentum-based push where he had some rams and some military on one side and some rams and some military on the other. Yeah. And now Nikov has cleared up almost all the military from him. And Jordan is one TC eco behind this. And Nikov, if he gets a castle up with onagers, could be in a decent position with 91 villagers. MBL looping now behind Doubt. He's going for stables. <laughs> Again, he's playing a 1v1 right now. <laughs> yep. He's playing a 1v1 stable with Japanese, but... You know, Doubt, we know what Doubt's trying to do. Doubt's just trying to hold on. Ooh, and Doubt missed the crossbow army from MBL at the back. Uh, there is some siege there for Tato. Tato's setting himself up quite nicely here. Yep. Compared to Leary on the other side, he's imping. But, you know, again, as you said, Jordan, he tried to do so much because realistically he had to. Look at the Arb micro, by the way. And Jordan didn't keep that mass up, but I do like how he's still got these groups here or there. Uh, in the eco of Aftermath, MBL. I like his micro. Notice the mangonels, MBL. Notice the mangonels. He does. He's taking out villagers. Good work, MBL. Leary is imping. I'm looking at his monastery now. He's got two relics, which is always great with the Lithuanians. 
Nikov isn't pushing, but I don't think this was a situation where they needed to push. I think they needed to just hold and stabilize. And while I don't think it's still really that stable, because Jordan still has an army back there, Nikov could at least make enough skirms and onitors to hold that and wait for his teammate. Look at MBL's castle right now. Yeah, I see that. And he can get away with it because he has plus two knights. Yeah. But Japanese... He's... Still playing a 1v1. Yeah, still playing <laughs> still the 1v1. Still playing the 1v1. And as long as his teammates can hold, yeah. it's not bad. I mean, you're taking one guy out of the game and now MBL shows up at the farming eco from Tato and Tato has to run with a ton of villagers here. MBL being very distracting. Tato, before he can push the enemy on their side, will have to deal with this army mm -hmm. from MBL. Also, Jordan having to come... Oh, big shot. MBL sees it and splits. He'll still probably lose the army, but just to complete my point as we see some crossbows get rocked, Jordan having to come back to deal with MBL means that Nikov can now worry about other things. That said, Jordan has his force still running towards Leary's base. Honestly, MBL lost a lot, but that was some sick micro there in the middle. He's going to just give up on that army now, but... Hey, also the castle spot is perfect. Because it's double, it's a castle next to two TCs from Doubt. Doubt is probably in the most uncomfortable position he's been in in a very long time in team game tourney. And yeah, I've seen Leary's a lot got... of uncomfortable positions from Doubt. <laughs> Leary's got uh, knights now, and he's just waiting to collapse on the army here from Jordan. Going for a second castle is Nikov, and Jordan's still without even his first castle. There's nothing he can do without bomber cannons against these trebs and the onagers are there too he needs tato to help but tato needs to help against doubt because mbl mm -hmm. is all over him mbl goes for another castle up on the hill also MBL needs to click up though soon also holding that position where mbl's got these castles means if this goes late there's no trade yeah so you're you're actually in a spot where you don't no even wood. need to push yeah you don't even need to push if you just hold this which will obviously involve attacking then there will be no late game trade which is what Tato's kind of setting up for. You can see his castles along the, uh, the cliffs. Oh, uh, this feels brutal for Jordan now. He's getting Onager of his own, but he's going to be against Trebs, Arblist, Onager, and now Cavalier from Leary. Which side do you go to? Do you go to Jordan or do you go to Doubt? I think I'd go to I think I'd go to Jordan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You definitely go to Jordan. Doubt Doubt is unimportant right now. What is important is that Leary doesn't have Arb yet. If you don't have Arb, you cannot deal with Latis. And the Latis, I, I think Nikov's got a little throw in him here. Because Elite Latis is on the way. Notice it's a big ball of Skirms, which was fine when it was just Jordan. But now Tato showed up and he's like, sup, buddy. Treb goes down and Onagers are going down. And if they had Siege here right now, they could maybe push Nikov's castle. Right, here come the Cavalier. Here come the Cavalier from Leary. Nikov needs to get Arbalist here to mm -hmm. become a a factor, a counter to the latest. We see Tato allocating time over on Doubt side to trap the castle so from MBL down. MBL going for another castle and a TC up on the wood line. MBL doing exactly the same thing he did yesterday, building castles up on the hill, taking control of that area and just slowly, slowly inching his way forward. Honestly, as Jordan finally loses his arbs, that first group that ran in finally loses it at MBL's base. Tato and Jordan are playing out of their minds right now. Like, there was a point where Jordan was 60 villagers behind. And guess what? He's still dictating the pace of the game. I think he's going to onager cut through this woodline on the left to try and make Nikov chase him even more. And Tato has to save Doubt, who's been... I don't want to use the word defeated, but it's been really bad for a really long time. They're giving themselves a chance here, but Paladin is it too difficult? Paladin from Leary. Difficult? What yep. a great recovery from him. Remember when he was down to like 30 bills? Right. And Tata was at 50 or something like that. And Leary now at 140. He's getting Paladin. Nikov going to struggle here. He's going to lose some population. But honestly, 120 villagers, I think he can afford yeah, to lose a bit. And uh, Leary will get Paladin here in 20 seconds. And these Arbalist will be dead. It's Elite Latest for Tato. He still has a few attack upgrades to get. He's got two relics, I think. Yeah, two in for his both. monasteries. Two for both so those Lithuanians. Are be tough. And MBL now going into Light Cav. And he's got some pikemen here, too. MBL is going to be very distracting on this right side. 
And Tato's going to have to bring over military. I don't think Leary's ever going to have to bring over military to support NBL. How how comfortable must it be to play when you can have someone locked down the right side like NBL has locked it down? And like, there has like, never been an opportunity to go that direction. The last anyone. two sets on this map, yeah. he's locked it down completely. He's yep. played so well. It's so funny to say because... MBL is like inconsistency incarnate. <laughs> sure, <laughs> sure. A we too, but he's been one of the most consistent players for this team. Tato with the latest in the south. That's actually kind of a big deal. That's where the trade will start. And we've got a push maybe starting as Tato with his latest and Jordan with his arms are getting ready, but hard to tell if that's going to be defensive or offensive as Tato oh, does MBL. get latest into MBL's base. Oh, MBL's going to be like, yo, hello? Yeah. <laughs> Where did these come from? Loses a ton of villagers. He's going Samurai now. Love to see it. Absolutely samurai. love to see it. Against Latus, yeah. it's pretty good. I, isn't Samurai... I guess they have a bonus against other unique units? Yeah, yeah. No, they... they. I don't think they'll trade like one-to-one, -one, but in yeah. terms of cost-effectiveness... Yeah, sure. That makes sense. I think they'll be, they'll be pretty good, and they're... You know, once you upgrade them to Elite, especially, they're a very strong unit. And I think if you've got them combined with some some Halbs or some Pikes. Oh, yeah, yeah, But yeah. look at Tato's raids, dude. Tato killing villagers from Leary. Tato's killed villagers from MBL. He's on all those extra little golds. At the same time, we have that push starting. I think this is where it's like do-or-die territory for Gamer Legion. They have to push this, this crazy forward line of Nikov. It's a lot of army for GL. It's Trebs now, but this is a classic situation with Vikings where you just feel so powerless against a player with bomber cannons. Yeah. Fortunately, though, you do have some latest there. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess for Tato, he's going to have to hope that latest are that much stronger than Paladin because Doubt is just completely out of this game. I mean, he's got 111 villagers, but it's like the same situation Margugu was in in the previous set, right? Yeah, where he's got vills, but like feels like he doesn't have much to do with them. He's going for Pikeman now. This is a really good start to the fight for Tato. He got a full surround on the units from Nikov. That was a really good fight for him. But will he be able to... Look, he knows it's a good fight. He's going to try and take out the castles and then build two of his own? Oh my goodness. I still, still don't going know. Down. Like, Trap's going down from Jordan. Latest are, are doing well against the Paladin. Nikov trying to pop up once again. He's trying to get more cannons on the field. MBL on the other side. He's got his samurai. Elite samurai mm -hmm. now. He's got Trebs behind this. Doubt is going into Pikeman to counter elite samurai. You want to see the saddest sight ever? Look at the two trade cards for Jordan. They're like near that corner, but they know they can't actually trade with anything over there. They're just waiting. And that time's <laughs> never going to come. They're just sitting there. It's so important oh my right God. now. MBL rips through the army of Doubt. And doubts, doubts. He's got nothing. He's had nothing for a while. He's just clicked crossbow. And I imagine the, the voice channel is very quiet right now for Gamer Legion. Mm -hmm. As tends to happen when everyone kind of knows. Look, the raids, though, from Tato, consistent. He snuck Whoa. those latest in. Yeah. He killed a lot of villagers from MBL. He's killing villagers from Leary once again. He's still got the latest in the south, Dave. I'm telling you, that's on a gold and also where the markets are going to start going up. Mm -hmm. And they're also, they are taking out the castles. From Nikov on the front. Yeah, but Tato's now losing his castles on the other side. It's true. MBL is just on a warpath right now. Yeah, and I don't think it's going to take very long for them to lose more castles if MBL just brings a few more trebs in with his group. Again, though, Tato, as he raid, he, he's taken Leary down below 100 vils. Tato has played out of his mind in this yep. game, and, and same with Jordan. And they're going to take a fight. They know they have to, Dave. Can they actually do this? Can you imagine if they could, like, kill Nikov latest, right now? The latest are strong. The problem for Jordan is that he can't quite range the Arbalest mm -hmm. behind from Nikov. And they're going to be taking out the latest. And once the pa latest are gone, the Paladin can engage against the Skirmishers. More production, though, coming in from Tatu. He's sending everything over to this side. He's letting Doubt die on the other side. And they're hoping that they can push this back. This Nikov needs production. He's got no military in the queue. If Dow was a little less dead, like a little less dead, maybe this would be doable. He's starting to make some arbs. MBL's only got one treb, but who needs that when you've got samurai, I samurai guess. Samurai ripping <laughs> castles. Man, this is the second castle. Look at how fast it goes down. These units attack so quickly. Tattoos. And MBL is through. 
Like, I'm trying to find the stats on this. Tatas must have killed like 50 villagers with those latest. And now yep. Nikov's castle is down. The score actually flipped there for a second. Tato is actually going to deny another castle with the latest from Nikov. And Nikov oh, notices. My. Credit to him, but... <laughs> Holy. If they can run into Nikov's base right now, no, take no, no. another look castle. At MBL. Look at where MBL is with the samurai. He's almost at the other flank with the samurai now. Uh, yeah, but that will have some arbs at least. Oh, man, I want there to be a chance for GL. We want enemy archipelago, man. Like, the army count, oh, Dave, man. is 100 to 100. Uh, how yep. on earth is this happening? Samurai produce super quickly, too. You yep. can see the line of them coming across. Yep. Probably the quickest producing unique unit. Maybe, actually, no. Maybe Karambit a little bit quicker. Or Showtails or something. That. But, uh, yeah. Showtails, yeah. Them, too. But still, it's a ridiculous push we've seen from MBL here. He's got another castle up on the hill. He's just waiting for Pop Space to make a treb. Mm -hmm. We have the latest still in the back there from Tato. As he didn't manage to deny the castle, Nikov's building it again, but... Doesn't have any army to support Jordan anymore. And I think with Gamer Legion, this is now a lack of resources. And they tried their best, but the GG rings out. And Tato says, GG, well played, and congrats to AM. Wow. It was a great series. Uh, I want to take my hat off, though, before we, we get to the uh, comments about Aftermath and their dominance here. But what a, what a fight from Jordan and Tato. I, that game was yep. so over. What a fight yep. from them. The fact, like... Just early on, just even losing the scouts and then mm -hmm. the momentum, MBL killing like 15 villagers from doubt. You know, Jordan not being able to go underwater, Tato losing his presence on water. Great comeback, Jordan carrying them until he reached a block where he didn't have a castle of his own. He was Vikings against a Civ with Bomber Cannon, against a Civ that just got Onager. Yep. Oh man, but what a performance there from Aftermath and specifically MBL. Yeah, he's, like, he really you, stepped it up the last few games. You you said it. Like, Leary and Nikov never had to worry about that side. I bet you MBL in the voice chat is just going, Nah, I doubt's dead. Doubt's yeah, dead. Yeah, and yeah. Tato, <laughs> like, don't worry about me. Just push the other side. I'm completely fine over here. And Tato sent all of his units to Jordan. And then must have been at one point he looked back in his base and saw a wave of samurai coming mm -hmm. in like, Oh, God. Here it comes. When you've got big names like this and big teams like this, it they're always going to have great strategy. They're generally going to have great civ selection and great gameplay, obviously. But I think in some sets, you have to look down to the, I don't know, since Aftermath's involved, we'll say the potato moments. Yep. And how many does each team have? And when I think back to Bedouins, potato, potato for Jordan down on either side, it was not good. It became mashed potatoes because they had nothing to deal with it, and they didn't have the solid build or, or uh, decision-making. And then, you know, Dow just... I disagree with the double dock strategy. He lost his scout, and the rest was history. He got completely mm -hmm. overwhelmed as well, and I can't remember too many moments where Hart, Leary, MBL, or Nikov got overwhelmed to that, uh, to that degree. And so maybe, you know, some people will say, well, unfortunately, Viper was sick, and maybe that's the case. But I yeah. thought Gamer Legion was playing really good as a team before they went into the finals. Aftermath, just more consistency over the course of the series. What maps did they lose? They lost uh, Nomad. the first map on Nomad, mm -hmm. right? Where they were kind of cramped for space, and they did end up killing Jordan there. A question about MBL landing, or the timing on MBL's landing, maybe. But I think Tato just played that super well. And then the other map that they lost was... What was it, chat? It wasn't was Black it? Forest. It wasn't uh It wait, was what? Arena. Did I not mark it? It was a, it was Arena. Oh, uh, it was Arena. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can't say that they played bad there either. I agree. Yeah. I, I think they just Tato once again with the early pressure kind of screwed them over. Exactly. And the rest of the maps it just looked very clear that AM was going to pull it out. Black Forest really a stomp basically when you think about all the damage they did to doubt fortress mbl with that crazy push and that was his sick. team to win that was sick. this this game mbl with the push enabling his team to win um the bedouins game which just wasn't even close that was that was that and didn't that, even that look was, that didn't even look like a, a, a team worthy of a finals there yep yep yeah that, that was nikov carrying that one 
And then what was the final one that they won? What was the fourth game that they won? They won... Well, the game we just saw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this one. Yeah, this one. And, and again, like, I think Jordan and Tato played above their level. They played incredibly well to give them a chance, especially Tato. Oh, my God. Uh, but it just wasn't, wasn't all there for Gamer Legion when they needed it. Uh, it is interesting to end the tourney and say, and yes, I'm a fanboy. Yes, I'm going to bring it up. Aftermath was taken to the limit by Deceptive Baguettes. Yes. Deceptive Baguettes almost beat Aftermath, who then beat Gamer Legion 4-2 today. So, do not forget my Baguettes, but Aftermath, great to see them all playing together. Great to see their form. Um, happy to see this this tournament through. And uh, again, shout out to, to Huey. I think that's how we're saying it. I don't know. Um, Huey and Nova, everyone involved in this. It's been a fun event, and it's fun to play. I, I had a lot of experiences there, and... It was fun to cast, and I know that the players really wanted the team game tourney. It came at a really good time. It came at a really good time, and of course, we've got Rage Forest coming up um, for team game stuff, and then we have uh, Memb hasn't announced specifics yet, but he's been teasing Battle of Africa as well, so... Uh, and there's more things that won't stuff. be teased. But yes. <laughs> team game stuff incoming. The, uh, the landscape for AoE2 competitive it's not at its best, but it doesn't look bad. Dude, it's, it's going to be sense. really fun. Um, yeah. Also, I've apparently been voted number three as the rising star for this tournament. <laughs> the rising star. Number three, baby. Number one, Anatov. I, I, number one? I, if, I mean... He, he deserves He that. deserves to be number one, number two, and yeah. number three. <laughs> if, I don't by know. a large margin, yeah. I don't know if I can believe this comment. Um... I, I want like an emote of you with oh in, like, my a star shape God, rising bro. up into the air. No, listen, <laughs> listen to this. Listen to this. I can't believe I'm actually so offended. Okay, I'm gonna show this on my stream. So listen to this. They did the vote, right? Yeah. Number one, Anatov, 61.3%. Deserved. Number two, Margu, 25.6%. Also deserved. Number three, tied for third between me and Emil from Denmark. 2.9%. Rising star, baby. That's like <laughs> one vote, right? <laughs> yeah, it's probably one vote. It's probably my mom, bro. My mom. Take it. That's my Dude, mom's take vote. Take it and run. Take it and run. Uh, I wish I wish I would have never clicked the link. I number 3 sounded so good. Uh okay. Oh, well, also Dave, I had super fun, super fun. I had a lot of fun casting the sets with you. This weekend, as always, right? And uh, well, I'm sure we'll be doing many more. Jordan just announced his 1v1 tourney, so maybe I can get more than 2.9% 2 of the Rising Star there. And uh, yep, yeah, lots of stuff Dude, to it's do, been, man. Uh, it's been great. It's been great. I really, really enjoyed it. And these, like, how consistent the games were. How yeah. consistently good they were, especially yesterday. Like, oh my God, especially the Baguettes games. Incredible. Yeah, I, I Thanks love... Thanks for joining me, man. It's I, great. I love the fact we had the rising star conversation uh, with the deceptive baguettes, that whole team. And then yep. as the one V one tournaments come up, we've got more people trying to take opportunities as they come, but yeah, same deal, man. I'm going to head off. Thank God we didn't have a 10 hour day, right? We can relax a little bit and uh, talk to you soon. Yeah. Peace, man. Later.